And we are live. What's up, guys? Welcome to Fed It. Today, we're going to talk about Chris Watts. I'm here with Angie, as you guys already know. we got a lot to cover, man. Sorry for the delayed start. Let's get into it. I was a special agent with Homeland Security Investigations, okay, guys? HSI. The cases that I did mostly were human smuggling and drug trafficking. No one else has these documents, by the way. Here's what Fed It covers. Dr. Lafredo confirmed lacerations due to stepping on glass. Murder investigation. He's reaching in his jacket. You don't know. And he's positioning. Been on February 13, 2019. You're facing two counts of premeditated murder. Racketeering and Rico conspiracy. Young slime life here and after referred to as YSL. The defendants is 6 9 And then this is Billy Seiko right here. Now, when they first started, guys, 6 9 ran. I'm a fed. I'm watching this music video. You know, I'm bobbing my head like, hey, this shit lit. But at the same time, I'm pausing. Oh, wait, who this? Right? Oh, who's that in the back? Firearms and violent crime. Him, AKA Pushaisi violated. In order to stay away from the victim. Rapper Pushaisi arrested after shooting at King of Diamonds, Miami Strip Club, injured one this person. Is the, this is the one that, that's gonna fuck him up because this gun is not traceable. Well, it happened at the gun range. Here's your boy 42 Doug right here on the left. Okay. Sex trafficking and sex crimes. Yeah. They can effectively link him to paying an underage girl. I'm gonna lock my 50 right, right. And well, the first bomb went off right here. Suspect to set down a backpack at the site of the second explosion. Inspired by Al Qaeda. Two terrorists, their brothers, the Zokar Sarnev and Tamer Lin Sarnev. When the cartel shipped drugs into the country. As this guy got arrested for um, espionage, okay, trading secrets with the Russians for monetary compensation. The largest corrupt police bust in New Orleans history. The days of the police are gone. So he was in this bad boy. We're gonna go over his past, the gang ties, so that this all makes sense. All right, and we're back. What's up, guys? Welcome to Fed It, man. Uh, today, we're going to be covering the Chris Watts case. But before we do that, I got a special guest in the house that you guys have come to <laughs> like quite a bit. Go ahead, Angie. Hello. What's up? Hello, guys. It's me again. I'm back. Um, yeah, we'll be covering Chris Watts case tonight. And we might cover another one for Thursday, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So I got to go to Dubai on Wednesday. So we'll film another one for y'all. Um, it's either between Murdaugh. Or John Benet Ramsey. Maybe we could yes. take a vote from them to yes. poll during the show. Um, because you guys know the Murdoch one, uh, he just got um, you know, sentenced to life in prison. That's been uh, trending quite a bit. Yeah. So uh we might end up doing that one for y'all. But uh anyway, real quick, uh let's get into the super chats. We got uh Dr. DJ Jackson, free top G. Yes, absolutely free Andrew Tate, man. <laughs> Y'all already know the Marco, uh, we did an episode uh last uh, on Friday where we showed the CCTV footage of you know, those girls coming in and out, man, they're not being trafficked at all, bro. It's just the biggest cap I've ever seen in my life. But Stop the cap. hopefully he'll be home soon, inshallah, and we'll be able to, you know, uh, talk about it. Um, but yeah, man, this is literally a travesty of what's going on. Like these women are false accusers, 1000%. Everybody knows that. Um, what else? Um, so, so this episode, I want to tell you all real quick, Chris Watts. So um, I had got some messages about this case, but I didn't know too much about it. And then Angie brought it to my attention. She was like, hey, this one's a really good one. I think that people would really like it. JCS yep. did a really good breakdown on it. So I watched it and I was like, wow, OK, this is actually an interesting one um, because it's not often right that guys end up, you know, you know, killing their family or deleting their family in this case. Actually, it's, it's way more often than you think. of. Well, it's not often in the grand scheme of crimes. Like we hear about it on the news, obviously. Right. Because it's yeah. because when it happens. But if you look at all the murders, right, most of the time, it's not going to be a dude annihilating his family. Yeah, that's why it hits that's such true. crazy press. But yes. it, but I will say it it's does happen percentage. way too much because <laughs> you got Murdoch, you got Chris Watts, you got Chris Benoit, who's a famous wrestler. I know you guys asked me about Chris Benoit as well. Those guys ha actually have a name. I'll talk about it later, but they are called family annihilators. Fa family what? Family annihilators. Annihilators? Anni annihilators. I got the word right here. Hang on. Uh, annihilators. I got it right here. Wait. She means annihilators, guys. I need, yeah. <laughs> that. <laughs> uh, okay. So, uh, oh, Jerome, of course, goes, Myron Payne, Andrew, eggplants. You guys are clowns, bro. Uh, <laughs> what? what? It's the, the typical jokes they always make. Uh, love you, Myron. Thank you for the happy birthday. Of course, bro. Happy birthday to you. And just so y'all know, we did not have sexual relations before this show, right? I was in the gym, all right? And she was up here <laughs> taking some notes and preparing for y'all, you perverts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was in the gym for real, man. That's why I was a little late. Uh, and then we got Joanza Evans goes, is it true that uh, Andrew Tate has cancer? Uh, 
Well, here's the thing, guys. There's lots, there's a lot of information about it. I can't confirm right now. I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure. Uh, S, your wife Angie Gaines is looking good for once. Oh, shit, you talking you talking smack? He's saying that you're looking good for once. You got something you want to say to him? Okay, thank you so much. For once, <laughs> right? She's used to you guys making fun of her at this point. Bro. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, um, anything else you want to you want to say before we get into the? Uh, yeah. Um, back to the list of cases. I've got. We've got loads of cases to cover you guys keep sending me like dms you keep commenting on my posts guys um i don't really appreciate you commenting on my posts really like it's not necessary you can just like hit my dms i'll be reading you all i mean <laughs> it's not funny also you some of you have been okay i want to make this clear um some of you have been asking for my only fans and you asked you have also commented that on other videos before i do not have only fans i've never said yeah. i did I never said I did, and I will not get one. So is this someone posing as you though on OnlyFans? What using is this someone using your pictures or something like that on OnlyFans? No, no, no. I've got like um, Instagrams, fake Instagrams, uh, trying to like promote a, a fake OnlyFans with my pictures. But oh uh, well. But I mean, it's just fake people, you know. But like, people be asking for my OnlyFans as if I have a OnlyFans, and if I as if I have said that I have OnlyFans, and I do not. I do not, and I'm not planning on getting one. So yeah, just to make that clear. There you go. Uh, All right. Yeah. Anything else you want to say? Yeah. Well, keep post. You keep sending me the cases. Uh, that you send me the cases doesn't mean that we are gonna do it like right away because we got like uh, this is the list, guys. It goes on. So. Oh damn! What the hell? Yeah. I didn't even know it was that much. Yeah. I'm telling you, man. Okay. Look at this. Okay, so. Wow. I mean, we you gotta give us time to you know research. Yeah. To, to consider to you know do the polls and everything. Because anytime we. Uh, get a case guys what we do is we typically watch a documentary on it uh like read through it see if it's going to be good for y'all and then if it's boring or it's kind of whack or something or too similar to something else we've covered we won't do it and the reason why is because we want to make sure that we get y'all you know and also we look at like what people are requesting the most mm -hmm. so whatever is requested the most that also has good content on it we typically cover it uh because we want to give y'all good content at the end of the day yeah. bro like i mean we could always do you know random cases here and there everything else like that but i, I want each piece of content to come out uh to be super high quality uh, we're releasing two videos a, a week right now, one on Sunday and then one on Thursday. I'm thinking about potentially bumping it up to three times per week, but I ain't gonna lie. It, that's gonna be very difficult because um, <laughs> the, the, researching for these cases takes quite a bit of time, yeah, man. It does. Uh, Andy Korea goes, Angie Gaines is back. Let's go. Ubering and listening to you guys. I appreciate that, man. Uh, Chief <laughs> Keith Andy goes, Gaines. can y'all check out Shamaya Hall, Italy, Texas? Uh, thanks. I'm not aware. That's thanks. I okay. Think. Uh, we should send them boys after the Tate accusers. <laughs> uh, man, we don't know what them boys is involved in, but uh, and then we got SCO971 shout uh, showing some love to the best streamer on the tubes. Thank you for all the effort you put into these. PS Heard Fresh was putting out a book. Congrats to him. Do we know if it's pop up or color by number? <laughs> no, nah, it's gonna be a book on networking, guys. Is what he's gonna be uh, putting out for y'all. So um, that's his expertise right there is networking and getting into certain clicks and everything else like that. Family inhalers? <laughs> right. Yo, but, man, I knew they were going to make fun of that. Yeah. What's the word, though? How do you say uh, it? Annihilators. Annihilators. Annihilators, yeah. This is the word. You here. said inhalers. I don't know. It's it. all good, bro. It's all good shit. <laughs> uh, but yeah, L English. <laughs> anyway, but uh, guys, so we're going to go ahead and get into this breakdown. Um, this is from JCS. As you guys know, I really like reacting to their videos. Um, this is a three-parter here uh of the chris watts case um yeah i guess we'll just get into it and do a do a breakdown of the investigation oh real quick before i even do that who is chris watts so guys chris watts as y'all can see uh christopher watts uh it was sentenced to well let's go to let's go here okay christopher lee watts born may 16 1985 uh in the early hours of august 13 2018 in frederick Colorado. This is the case um, page, you know, like yeah. the family murders. Uh, American oil field operator uh, Christopher Lee Watts was murdered his pregnant wife, Shannon, 34, by strangulation and their two children, Bella, 4, and Celeste, 3, by smothering them. He buried Shannon, Shannon in a shallow grave near an oil storage facility and dumped his children's bodies into crude oil tanks. Watts initially maintained his innocence in his family's disappearance, but was arrested on August 15 after confessing to murdering Shannon in an interview with detectives. He later admitted to murdering his children so get right into it guys um from jcs do me a quick favor before we get into this thing like the video subscribe to the channel this is a very disturbing case but y'all requested it so uh let's get into it J angie you got anything before we go no all right but you can go without further ado
The drama began shortly after the Frederick Police Department received a call from Nicole Atkinson, the best friend of Shannon Watts. She had arranged to drive Shannon into town that same day for a pregnancy checkup, but there was no answer when she knocked at the door, nor any response to her text messages or phone calls. After noticing her shoes were still at the front door, she became concerned and called 911. Nicole? Yes. Okay. What's going on? So, my friend, um, we were out of town for a business trip this weekend. All right. And I dropped her off at 2 o'clock this morning. She's 15 weeks pregnant. She wasn't feeling well. And she had a doctor's appointment this morning at 9. And I told her to let me know if she needed me to take her. She's got two little girls. I've called. I've texted. Her car's in the garage. Her shoes she wears every single day right in the front door. How you doing? You seen your neighbors today? No? Okay. What's Chris's phone number? Chris's phone number is... Hey, Chris, I'm Sir Coonrod for the police department. Pretty good. So, do you have any idea where your wife is? Right. What my concern is her car's here. They're saying she is diabetic, and I don't want her... She's upstairs and can't respond. Okay. Not how far out are you? Okay. All right. He said like five minutes. It's not a sure sign of guilty conduct, yet the fact that Chris made the officer wait for his return would have most likely alerted some minor suspicion. In normal circumstances, a husband receiving a call from the police saying they were concerned about the safety of their pregnant wife and children, in most cases, would have given them permission to immediately kick the door down. It's a truly somber awareness to know that the man stepping out of the car had only a very short time ago dumped his infant daughter's bodies into an oil tank and buried his pregnant wife in a shallow grave. Scott, how you doing? How's it going? So this is the only vehicle she would have? Only one of Okay, do you guys just notice how I said, hey, what's going on? Hey, what's going on? And just immediately goes right into the garage? This is a huge red flag, right? Normally, if you hear something like this, like, oh, your pregnant wife is in some trouble or what's going on here, he would be frantic, panicking, like, what's going on, blah, 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 blah. But instead, he's just like, hey, what's up? And then he just like runs right into the house. And he goes through the garage, which is also strange. So I want you guys to pay attention to that, uh, that behavior. She would drive. Okay. The familiar routine for anyone checking for someone's presence inside a house, whether it be an emergency or otherwise, is to immediately call out to them for instantaneous reassurance. Chris remains silent, but instead feels the need to examine his wife's car before subtly sneaking through the internal garage door. He then. That's weird. And disappears for one minute and seven seconds before letting the neighbors and police officer inside. Only Chris will know what he carried out during that time period, but it's safe to assume that his curious behavior was not going unnoticed, made evident by the unsettled gaze of Nicole as he opens the door. Yeah, look at her face, guys. She's like, what the hell is going on? Like, like, bro, what? <laughs> why'd you go into the garage the instead of just letting us come with you or like immediately kicking in the front? Like, this is just strange because remember... Sketchy. Yeah, it's sketch because and, and again, he checked that Lexus vehicle, his wife's vehicle before anything. Then he ran to the house without saying a word randomly. There's like, all right, guys, I'm gonna open the door for you guys on the front. So even the, the friend is looking like this is strange. Like, what's going on here? Or Mind if I come in, Chris? There were multiple key moments captured from inside the house, which may not have been noticed. And I don't know if you guys caught that, but the reason why the police officer said, hey, do you mind if I come in? He's getting verbal consent. The reason why he's doing that, guys, is because probably subconsciously the police officer knows. I don't know if I'm welcome in this home because he hasn't, even though there's like some danger or whatever, when the 911 called and asked him if we could kick it in, he said no, or he didn't offer it. Then when he went into the home, he didn't say, come with me. So the officer has to verbally ask him, hey, do you mind if I come in? And that's when he said, oh, yeah, that's cool. So now he has the grounds to come in. And remember, guys, when it comes to uh, police going into your home, right? Right to be means right to see. And anything they see that could be involved, that could potentially uh, incriminate them or anything else like that is all fair game. OK, that's what I remember. They taught us more in the academy. Right to be means right to see. And if he's given consent that he can go into the house, that means he's right. To, he has the right to be there. And anything he sees is fair game. All right. Plain view doc doctrine. So that's why that police officer asked that, because at that point, he knows in the back of his mind, this dude is acting a little weird. He hasn't given me consent overtly. So let me ask for it. 
searched immediately by the officer, but would have no doubt been gathered by forensics upon further investigation. The most overt peculiarity was Chris's interaction with his phone. The guise of his thumb movement would have given the impression he was texting someone, which would have seemed very peculiar, as the normal response would be to frantically call people rather than text given the circumstances. Hindsight gives us a clearer picture of Chris's introversion, which is that he was most likely using his phone to avoid eye contact and progressive dialogue with the officer. What time do you leave the day? What time do I leave there? Come no, here. here. Uh, usually between 5.30 and 6. Alright. And what, Shannon, here then? Yes. Yeah, we do this on that. Does she usually watch the kids, or do you have daycare watch no, them? Or? She, she usually watches the kids at the high school. Okay. Do you guys have any kind of issues, marital issues, or? We're going through separation. You are? Now, how's that going? Uh, it's, it's going civil for the most civil. part, or? <laughs> like, yo, like, this is weird. Right? Like, yo, my man is out here surfing through Instagram or what, what are you doing? Bro, <laughs> like, he's out here liking Thotty's pictures or what's going on here, man? Boom, my God. <laughs> oh, yo, I love that y'all are saying L Chris in the chat and saying Chris is a bum and shit. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> uh. Additionally, we are presented with the subtle cues of Chris's forethought cover story, being that his wife simply ran off with the kids after a breakdown in the marriage. My man letting all them girls know he's single now. <laughs> Y'all on the market, baby. You know what time it is. Um, they're blankets they sleep with. They don't leave anywhere without them. Good. The rest of Chris's conduct could be analyzed and dissected in various ways, and it would be easy to pick at certain oddities in body language and link them with signs of guilt. Yet, without the hindsight we have now, his behavior could just as easily be linked with an innocent man who is understandably concerned and frantic over the disappearance of his family. His very conservant neighbor, however, had the perceptual advantage of knowing Chris on a semi-personal level, and could analyze his kinesics in a far more accurate manner than the police officer. You just want to go talk to him? I'm going to his info real quick. No. Oh, here we go. The friend no son's off. Of course. Right. We completely honest with you. My wife and I were kind of wondering when she was on vacation if something happened because I've heard them full out screaming at each other at the top of their lungs and he gets crazy. Does he? And that's pretty recently. Yeah. He doesn't look worried. He looks like he's trying to cover his track. <laughs> and bro, this is their friend. This is, well, a, allegedly his friend saying this. So obviously as a police officer, that raises your suspicion to a whole other level. Right? Yeah. So um, he's acting way out of character. And one of the worst times in a normal person's life, finding out that your children and your wife are missing. What's up, dude? He's over here telling them, telling you three times what he took out, what he did, what he did, what yeah, he did. He's very, he's very, 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 he's very, very he never talks. So the fact that he's over here blabbing his mouth makes me kind of suspicious. This was just after the moment he had shown both Chris and the officer his surveillance footage of that same morning, capturing only Chris leaving the house after loading multiple unidentified things into his truck. Yeah, we can pick up. Okay, loading a bunch of things in his truck not, dark at night not or only, early morning. Sorry, not only this guy was like suspicious mm -hmm. of him, yeah. but also the woman, because the woman that called the police was like the best friend of his wife. Yes. Yes. Right? The one that was shocked when he was like opening the front door. Yeah. So what happened before is that she texted, uh, he, she texted him because uh, his wife had an appointment, like a medical appointment, because she's, she was pregnant. Ah, uh, yes. So she missed it. Mm -hmm. So she was, like, worried. And she was, what, 30-something weeks pregnant, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, she was, like, 15 weeks pregnant. Okay, okay. She, she was, like, in, in her fourth month or something like that. I don't know. So, anyways, um, she she texts him to know what happened to Shannon, which is the wife. And he was, like, uh, yeah, she went, she went on a play date, but they only have one car. 
and the car oh. was in the garage. Okay, that so was like, that he inspected. Yeah, and, and she it was, was like, in there. Yeah. The garage, the the car is here. So what She's the fuck? Home. But the, she kept like trying to open the door, and they have this thing in the house where they send you like an alarm to your phone every okay. time you you feel something. Okay. So. So he was getting alarmed. Uh, he noti- was, notifications. He when was she getting was trying notifications, to open the door. and she told him, "Yo, I'm gonna call the police." And then he was like, no, don't call the police. I'm going to go home. And then that's when that happened. Like oh, she called okay. the police. And that's when he got there. He got all nervous. That's, that's was, okay. Was, so he didn't expect it. That's explains yeah. his weird behavior. Yeah. He was like, please don't call the police. She told, oh, he told her okay. to don't call the police because he knew. They didn't mention that in the pot in the, in the doc. Okay, cool. A little in, extra insight there. Um, also, guys, do me a quick favor. We got uh, 1,300 of you guys watching right now. Do me a quick favor, man. Let's get this thing to 1,000 likes, man, so that we can get the engagement up so videos like this can um you know hit the algo a little bit harder because you know we're, we're, we're providing all types of content out here man although not fully incriminating as shannon and the kids could have left through the back entrance this was an extremely detrimental piece of evidence and would have no doubt been extolled by forensics and made chris an immediate prime suspect and you guys can see how his uncomfortable behavior while his neighbor was talking about potentially another camera angle let's let's look at let's look at um chris watts real quick when he's describing this through the back entrance this was an ex- although not fully in- so unless they pull right here to put out a copper walk now just look at him. He's just, you Although, can see he's just extremely uncomfortable that there, uh, another angle might exist. Though not fully incriminating, as Shannon and the kids could have left through the back entrance, this was an extremely detrimental piece of evidence and would have no doubt been extolled by forensics and made Chris an immediate prime suspect. The following day, Chris, for some bizarre reason, agreed to be interviewed by two separate news stations where he came across as extremely unimpassioned and detached from the alarming nature of the situation. Like, now, guys, remember, this is a guy that's an introvert. He doesn't like talking like that. He's very quiet, etc. So the fact that he would give two interviews, right, to news stations right after this is kind of, that's not very introverted behavior. But it looks to me as, as if he's like, yo, I got to paint a narrative first before people suspect me of something. When I got home yesterday, it was like a ghost town. Like, she wasn't here. The kids weren't here. I have no idea like where they went. And right now it's got K9 units, the sheriff's department. Everybody's like they're they're doing their best right now to figure out like if they can get a scent. If she wasn't here, like where did she go? Like once I got here, it was like, all right, who can I call? I called her three times, texted her about three times just to say, you know, what's going on? Like if she's vanished, like I want her back so bad. I want those kids back so bad. Right now <laughs> Yo. That was the least passionate. I want her and my kids back so bad. Yeah, he's got like a snicker in his face. Yeah. <laughs> I want her back so bad. <laughs> like what, bro? <laughs> Yo, my man needs to take some acting classes. <laughs> Holy, like what the? Bumba God. I don't even want to just like throw anything out there. Like, I hope that she's somewhere safe right now and with the kids last night i wanted I, I wanted that knock on the door i wanted to see that i wanted to see those kids running running just just barrel rush me and just give me a hug and knock me on the ground Bruh. that's why last night was just horrible i couldn't do it, it i just i'm hoping that some what was that laugh at the end there like what the... <laughs> <laughs> buddy so, I think even he sees how bad his, his acting is. He's like, damn, this shit trash. Nobody believes me. Something or somebody knows something and comes forward. Shannon, Bella, Celeste, if you're out there, just, just just come back. Like, like what? Somebody has her. Just like, just look at like the the dead stare. You know what I mean? Like that. You know, we make fun of three hundred fours, right? That thousand uh, cock stare. It's almost similar here. It's like just the dead in the eyes. Like, yo, I don't see any passion here. It doesn't look to me as if a guy lost his wife and children. You know what I mean? To me, I look at it like this is a dude that's single and about to hit the market. <laughs> <laughs> He's selling all them hoes. Get over here! I'm on the market, baby. <laughs> Please bring her back. I need to see everybody. I need to see everybody again. This house is not complete with without anybody here. 
This could have been construed as shock trauma, where a person will turn numb and retreat into themselves as a means of escape. Yet the viewers watching this live from home were probably thinking what we as the retrospective audience already know. He was called in for questioning four hours later. One of the oldest and most commonly used techniques is for the interrogator to sit between the door and the suspect. This is for the purpose of heightening the feelings of isolation and dependence. It's an indirect subliminal message, letting Chris know that the only way out of that room is through the detective. It's an excellent tool for stripping away confidence, thus increasing the telling signs and body language when information is fabricated. 4 a.m. This one, my alarm goes off for work. Man, I'm serious. Get dressed, brush my teeth, everything I do upstairs. Okay. About 4.15, that's when I get back, slide right into bed next to her and start having a conversation with her about having the house, the house up for sale. And All right, so he's going into, guys, um, having a discussion with his wife about putting the house on sale. And he's going to go into, and you and I know the audio isn't the best here, as you guys know, with these police interrogation rooms a lot of the times the audio is like very bouncy or whatever mm -hmm. but he's talking about he's going to talk about some marital issues and also them selling the house talking about stuff like actually going proceeding with the separation okay and obviously it gets pretty emotional like we're talking about you know like we felt this the disconnection was there like falling out of love and trying to stay together maybe just for the kids sake but we're realizing that doing like our homework it's not most of the time, that's not going to work. Yeah. So um, he basically says he got ready for work, goes to work, receives call from the police, and then returns home. And as you guys know, right, sh shout out to Angie, um, he didn't want the police to be called by the best friend um, for obvious reasons. So that's when I got home. I opened the garage door and we went inside the house. And also, I want you guys to pay attention to his body language. He doesn't really look at the detective in the eye. He's looking down as he's telling his story. Um, yeah. if you guys remember, we did a podcast with uh, Andrew Bustamante from the CIA, a uh, former CIA officer, and he talked about how um, the part of your brain that um, is the creative side, right, when you're trying to imagine things, uh, it's activated more when you look down and you're telling something versus when you're, you know, you tend to be a little bit more honest when you're looking up because you're trying to draw from your memory and stay factual, right? So notice how much he looks down when he's telling this story, all right? Um, now, does it mean that every single time you look down, it means you're lying? No, of course not. There's always exceptions, but it is a good tool to gauge uh, the truthfulness of an individual. So pay attention to that. And then also, I want you guys to pay attention to how he mumbles when he tells his story here. It's not very, um, he speaks in a very passive voice. It's not this happened and then this happened. It's like, I think this happened. Maybe this happened. It's a very passive voice. And looked everywhere, Shanann Bella, Celeste, nowhere to be found. She has wedding rings on her nightstand, her phone's still on the couch, her purse is still there, the medicine for the kids is still there, the car and the car seat is still there, and there's no sign of them anywhere. Okay. I was just hoping that, I left all the lights on in the house, I was hoping that I'd get a knock on the door. But yeah, nothing so happened. Yeah, but nothing happened. What do you think happened? At first, I really thought maybe she was just at somebody's house, just yeah. decompressing. Yeah. But after today, like with the onslaught of all the cars, I mean, all the police cars, all the news, all the canine units, it's making me lean the other direction about someone took her. Okay. But it's just, if someone took her, it would have to have been someone she knew. Because there's, there's no sign of anything like being disturbed, broken. Mm -hmm. But like that's the way I'm leaning now. At first, I thought for real she was just decompressing somewhere. Just, I mean, I thought she was safe, mm. even though everything in the house was left there. But now it's just after the day with the news crews and everything, it's just it feels more the other direction, and it's freaking me out. Oh, 
on that night, I told her, I woke up that morning, early that morning, mm -hmm. I told her, like, the disconnection is it's there, like, it's not going away. Like, the connection we had when, in the beginning, mm -hmm. it's not there anymore. It's like, I don't feel like the love we have is there anymore. Okay. And it's just like, I don't feel like, I mean, if we want to stay together for the kids, I'm not sure if that's going to work. Mm -hmm. Like bringing us what you told him. Yes. Okay. Like having another baby and bringing us into this relationship. Do you think this is going to work mm -hmm. with us being together or separation? I think is going to be the best possible route for us. And that's when like all the crying and everything proceeded. And it was just it was very hard just just to talk talk about that. Mm -hmm. But I needed to do it face to face. Okay. And I needed like I needed to see her face like while I did it. I couldn't uh, text phone, whatever, I needed to be face to face and be able to see her and know that she was going to be at least reciprocating back to me. So what did she say? She said that it was, I mean, it was, she wants, she wanted to kind of work on it, mm -hmm. but if that's the way I was feeling, then she respects that. Okay. Uh, 1 p.m. I'm now on my way home to check on my family. Uh, is that just because you're worried with, based on the conversation? Yeah. Nicole, had the police contact you by then? No. Okay. She got, I arrived. I'm sorry, go ahead. But uh, Nicole says she was probably going to call the cops. Okay. All right. Now, so it sounds like Nicole's pretty worried. Mm -hmm. More worried than you. Oh, so I, I, okay, bam. So now he's starting the process of challenging his story, you know, and chinking away at the armor a bit. And obviously, this is a big ass red flag because why is the best friend? more worried than you. And the other thing too you guys got to remember is that more than likely this detective did his homework. He watched the body cam footage from the investigating officer. The investigating officer probably told him, hey, you know, I showed up on scene, etc." Because when you interview the suspect, guys, the suspect is most of the time, right, one of the last people that you talk to. You talk to the officer that showed up on scene, you talk to other witnesses, etc. So when they brought him in, he probably at this point, if he's a good detective and did his homework, looked at the body cam and noticed a strange behavior. So, He's coming in with more facts than Watts probably knows. Once, once she couldn't get anything out of her and nothing was going on in the house, I was like, all right, I gotta go home. The sharp and sudden change of angle from baseline questioning to direct confrontation would normally make an innocent person refute or at least challenge the statement. There would also be a brief pause as they would need time to process the allegation due to its perplexity. A guilty individual would already be in a defensive state of mind and would normally respond in a hastily modus. Instead of refuting the remark, they would accept it but try and explain its actuality in a defensive manner. But it sounds like Nicole was more worried. Yeah, because like most of like if she hasn't texted me, like I understand that. Okay. Like sometimes that happens. Okay. But for her not to get back to her okay. direct sales group, okay. that was very unorthodox. Okay. So then they're they're at home. Um police officers there. Mm -hmm. Um then walk me through that. So as we go through the house, we're all Do you immediately go through the house? Like I open the garage door and I just I just go into the house. I'm I'm, I'm looking. Like I just go in the garage door and I'm looking. Is the police officer saying, "Hey, let me talk to you for a minute"? No, no. Okay. What's, no. The, what's the vibe like? I just, I just I go up there, shake his hand, but I'm like opening the garage door at the same time. Okay. And then I go through, and then they're waiting at the front door. I go in, open that up, and then they come in. Oh, so they go in the garage door with you? Okay. Well, they they went in the garage. See, told y'all, he watched the body cam footage, which is why he's asking these questions. He already knows the answer, but he wants to see what he's going to say to kind of get a gauge of how he sounds when he's telling the truth. And he probably he wants to grill him a bit on his strange behavior uh, with a police officer being there and your wife not being found and you going around into the garage and not immediately telling the officer, hey, come in the house with me. If you really were scared of anything, you would probably say, hey, you go in first. You're armed. You know, let's find out where my wife is. Okay. Come in the way I did. All right. So then they, everybody goes in. I think that was at, at four o'clock. That's when, um, cause the neighbor, cause the neighbor, yeah, was the officer, I went over to the neighbor's house to see if he saw anything. And who that he was at? I think it was the officer. Cause mm -hmm. he just went over there. Um, and then that's when the, uh, neighbor called him back over to show him he, um, he had some stuff from the other night. Kind of show him like whatever he had that, that put motion on it. Okay. 4 
p.m. Police check neighbor security footage and question them as well. Okay. Have we talked about that? Is that where we're, we're okay. kind of where we're at? Uh, anything else about that? No, I mean, it just shows Nicole dropping her off, but her not walking up. And it shows me loading my truck up and about the time that told you I left. Okay. Now, as you guys could tell, um, your boy Chris Watts is saying a bunch of BS, right? And the <laughs> detective knows this. But you guys got to remember, when you're doing a criminal investigation, right, and you're interviewing a suspect, your goal is to get them to talk as much as possible without saying, I want a lawyer, or I don't want to talk, or I'm going to invoke the Fifth Amendment and stay silent. You want them to talk. And for them to continue talking, you want to limit confrontation until you get some kind of story. Okay? So this is how an interview typically goes. When I used to interrogate my suspects, etc., you come in, you introduce yourself, and you want to be as chill as possible. Okay? You want to introduce yourself, shoot the shit about random stuff, see what they're interested in. You literally have a conversation as if you guys are like friends, okay? That's how it's got to be. You got to build rapport with the individual first. It's not what you guys see in the movie come in with a dark light or, you know, in a dark ass room. They're sitting by themselves and you got the spotlight on them. Hey, tell me what I need to know. Bong. And you slap him. No, it's not any of that, guys. Okay. You, you, don't, oh, you, can. you don't hit the suspect with the Shoryukens, at least in the beginning. <laughs> so, you got to go ahead and build rapport with the individual. And this takes some time. And a big part of that is you got to let them just talk, okay? Because when people are talking, what ends up happening is they get more comfortable talking and they might disclose certain facts or, well, they might disclose certain things that are lies. And that's good for you as the investigator because when you go into the interview, you already know a bunch of the facts. Like this detective, I can already tell he's watched the body cam footage and he knows that Watts has been acting very strange and he's trying to figure out where his headspace is at, right? So the first interview... A lot of the times, right, or at least in the beginning, if it's going to be a longer interview, is you're going to shut up and let the guy talk because you don't want him to lawyer up and you don't want him to invoke his Fifth Amendment right to silence. All right. That way you can at least get some kind of story. And then your job as the investigator is to punch holes in that story or confirm it's true through the independent evidence that you gain through the investigation that either corroborates or does not corroborate the information that the suspect gave you. That's why he's kind of shutting up uh, 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 quite a bit here. And he's not, he waited until what? An hour in, right? To ask this. Got something kind of hard to talk about. Um, so when I work investigations like this, I have to keep an open mind on everything. Okay. And part of keeping an open mind listening to you talk about your and i know you guys said you want subtitles this video unfortunately doesn't have them but you know as the detective is talking you can see them now your wife and your marriage and the day she goes missing is the day that you guys have marital discord okay so you can understand what i'm thinking about you yeah what do you think about that uh, i'm making sick to my stomach honestly like i know like i've talked to a few of my friends is like, you know, this does not look good on you. I'm like, so he's applying something in the form of a question, and it kind of throws the person for uh, for a loop because they're like, oh, wait, how do, how do I answer this? And they might get tripped up when you imply something within a question. I know. It's like people that, if people knew that we were having marital issues, they're going to look at me, especially with the way everything looks. And it honestly just makes me sick to my stomach because this is something that I would never do. Ever. I, I know, like, you have to look at every every vantage point. This is something I would never do to my kids or my wife at all. And notice Stop the cap. how the detective, right, purposely is sitting there quietly and lets the awkward silence do the work for him. Okay? And what that's going to do is. That's going to prompt the suspect to talk more to fill the void, okay? Because they know, all right, I did this. They maybe know that I'm onto it. They, they might be onto me or not. Let me fill this awkward silence. And it prompts the individual to talk more. Because remember, like I told you all before, the first interview or the beginning part of the interview is always important to get a statement, okay? Even if it's a lie, it helps you. Matter of fact, that statement is how, if you guys look at it, Statements with uh, contradictory evidence can work to really get you sealed up. The Murdoch case that is going down in South Carolina right now that this guy just got sentenced for, 
a big part of the investigation is circumstantial because he lied. Oh, I wasn't at the kennels, right? When he really was. And that was a big part of evidence because he, um, because uh, his whole defense con was contingent upon him not being there. But then the Snapchats revealed that he was actually there. We might end up breaking down that case for y'all. I'm going to go ahead and do a poll during this podcast. Um, but you guys get the idea. So they want to go ahead and elicit as much information as possible because even when they lie, it's still worth something because you're able to go ahead and blow that lie through the water uh, with the evidence that you do find. This is what is known as the pause technique. After the suspect answers a question, the interrogator will remain silent while maintaining eye contact. This physical demeanor gives off the subtle cue that he expects more information to be divulged and may already know more than the suspect realizes. I'm not sure, like, what I... Bam. Gotcha, bitch! I could do, like... And he has to talk more because he's like, oh, well, did that not work? To make people believe that, just because if they... If they knew we at marital discord, they would automatically leave me. But there's no... I would harm anybody in my family. At all. Stay quiet, man. <laughs> uh, Stop the cap. Cap, just, uh, cop is just like, come on, bro. I know we were having marital discord, and we had that conversation that morning. And then she goes, we have no idea where she is or the kids. I promise you that not, not, I had nothing to do with any of that. <laughs> hey guys while well, this detective continues grilling this dude and uh making him uh <laughs> staying silent do me a favor guys we got only 675 likes however we got um 1700 of you guys watching so do me a favor man please smash that like button guys subscribe to the channel if you haven't already because it really helps with the engagement like the video you don't have to donate a dollar through super chat you don't have to become a member you don't have to do any of that I genuinely do this channel because I enjoy it. Brings back great memories of when I was on the job. Just like the video, that's all I ask so that we can grow the channel and people can get more great true crime content like this because there ain't nobody else on YouTube that was a former special agent actually breaking down these cases for you guys from a professional background. You know, I'm not one of these bimbos putting makeup on my face while I talk about Jeffrey Dahmer or any of that other crap. I'm giving y'all real deal experience type breakdowns, man. So like the video, man. Subscribe to the channel. That's all I ask. And uh, also check out Angie on Instagram. It's uh, so Angelica with two A's at the end. All right. So send your dick pics there. I'm sure she likes them. No. <laughs> Are you telling me the truth? I'm telling you the truth. Why should I believe you? A truthful individual will normally respond to this question with a question, such as, why are you asking me that? Or, what's going on here? They will often protest the aggressive nature of the Inquisition, or give a short and forceful response. Because I am a very trustworthy person, and the people that do know me, they know how I am a calm person, I am not an argumentative person, I am a person who is that's never going to be abusive or physical in any kind of relationship. I would never harm my kids. I would never harm my wife. I mean, you can talk. I mean, any, you can talk to any of my friends, any of her friends. They know me. They know I'm a low key guy. That's quiet. I'm. I'm not about confrontation. I'm not about anything that elevates to that level. I mean, you can, like if someone like, yells at me, screams at me, I just take it and I just. I just Try to get it by the wayside and get it back to where it's a cool, just a cool conversation to where like none of, that, none of that gets to the height. Because I am not that. Look at how long it takes him to give a response to "Are you lying?" I mean, it should be a simple. Uh, nope. That person. I've never been that person. Now let me show you guys what it looks like when you are getting falsely accused. All right. Um. This right here is an example. See, this guy ends up getting arrested, I think, for a burglary or something like that. And the detectives bring him in. I want you guys to see the, diff the stark difference. Break in and steal a multitude of valuable items. The detective then explains that she picked him out of a 12-picture lineup of suspects. She says you broke in this apartment. 
Look at the difference between when someone is innocent versus when they're guilty. Okay, well, tell me why. Justin is now aware of the burglary charge, which holds a possible 20-year prison sentence due to previous convictions. He will now begin to forcefully assert his innocence, and each time he does so, will bring forward his posture and strengthen his vocal emphasis while making the assertion. All right, so I mean, she's saying that I was there before. Is that what she's saying? She's saying she's seen my face before the act, before the break-in happened? Yep. Yeah. I didn't break in her house. I don't, I don't know who she is. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know no girl named Candy. None of that shit, man. Why is she saying that you're... I don't know why she's saying she's... I don't know why I don't know. What were you doing there? I was not there. I was not... I don't know this girl Candy. I was not there. The only candy that I even heard of is this uh, guy I know named Tim Stahl dates her. The person he just mentioned was the accuser's ex-boyfriend. Okay. That's it. How do you know Tim Stahl? I grew up with the dude, man. The accuser's testimony was later picked apart in court. She was caught lying on the stand multiple times, and Justin was exonerated. He was proved... False accusations, man. What do I tell y'all, bro? Stop the show. This is why women deserve less. Books in store, book in stores right now. Okay, hardcover, paperback, Kindle. <laughs> Dumb, the monk, Audio the monk, version coming soon. But this is an example, guys, of someone that is innocent. As you guys can see, he's actually challenging the detectives back. He's not trying to comply with them. He's like, no, I didn't do this. This is bullshit. Okay. Been innocent, not just beyond all reasonable doubt, but essentially beyond all doubt. Last thing I heard about them too, she had him arrested for domestic violence. That's all I know about this girl, Candy. I ain't never went in that girl's house. None of that shit. I didn't do that shit. I didn't. As God is my fucking witness, I did not do it. Are you and here's the other thing, too. The police probably went ahead and looked at her criminal history and saw, oh, damn, she did get arrested for domestic violence. So little things like that add credibility to what the individual is saying. I used to be a piece of shit when I got fucked in this. I told myself, what, going back? I ain't done nothing but work my fucking ass off. They talked to my been out. Can you, can you prove... Other than you saying you're not, is it that, that morning? What can you tell? How can you prove to me that you were at home? All you gotta do is call and ask my mother. So you're telling me you didn't step foot out of the house? Not one foot. Tuesday. Not one. The detective then goes on to reveal Justin is accused of assaulting the supposed victim during the robbery. Take man and now look at his reaction to this. Here and you hit her over the head with it, and you guys fight. And she got injuries. No, man. And hell no, man. Get her goddamn boyfriend, Tim Stone, in here question him about her goddamn injuries. Look at that straight right there. This sounds like he's a goddamn... <laughs> so as you guys can see from his body language, right? Not only does he refute the accusation directly, but he goes ahead and names the potential possible suspect instead. Okay? Now, I know some of y'all might be saying, oh, that's snitching, blah, blah, blah. Hey, man, look. If you're getting accused of a serious felony, and this guy had just gotten out of prison, too, trying to get his life straight, etc. You're going to go ahead and be like, that ain't me right there. It's this guy, right? So this all adds more credibility. And the fact that he's directly challenging the, the detective's evidence and or testimony, whatever, right, shows that he's innocent versus you guys have seen us do breakdowns on other interrogations where when the detective accuses them, right, they give some lengthy ass explanation. Oh, no, I didn't do it. Blah, 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 blah. No, this was like, no, it ain't me. He's taking it at face value. I think the fucking her boyfriend, Tim Stall, the fucking done something to her, and now they're trying to put it on me. That's exactly, I know that's what the fuck this is. And look, that's why we're talking to you, okay? No, this is bullshit, man, because I've tried everything in my fucking power to stay the fuck out of this goddamn fucking penitentiary shit. I did not do that shit, man. Okay. That's, that's what we're talking to you. We're here to, we're here to investigate this, okay? That's why we're asking all these questions. Man, poor guy. I'm sorry to freak out, man, but I didn't fucking do this shit, man. I'm fucking shaking. I did not fucking do this, man. Justin had already served three years in prison for a robbery in his early 20s. He more than likely knew the reassuring tone of the investigator wasn't a good sign. Although slightly more animated than the average person, this form of aggression is a commonplace response from the innocent being directly accused. 
He comes off aggressive, but in a defensive manner. He is not being hostile, but highly combative when professing his innocence. His conduct is totally justified considering the circumstance. When facing a considerable amount of time in prison for something you didn't do, this level of anger is warranted. So when compared to the forgiving composure of Michael... D so there you go, guys. So that's an example of, like, you know, confronting the evidence head on when you know you're innocent, right? And you guys notice here, your boy Chris Watts ain't doing none of that. He's been going for a Jeez. minute long plus talking about it wasn't him. And the detective's just like, come on, man. Okay. See the difference? See the difference between the two individuals? Would you take a polygraph? Sure. Okay. Let's take a little break. I'm going to come back in here. I have a lot more questions for you. How are you feeling? Look at that picture. She's always the one that's just like, she's off. She's either go or sleep. She's always on growling. She's, she's always been, she's a tiger. Bella, she's the calm, the mothering one. She's the one that's always, you okay? You okay? You fine? Okay. She's just, she's just the sweetest little girl. She's the one that favors me more. And Celeste is the one that favors Jeanette more. You guys can see how hard he's acting, you know, to trying to push push some kind of sorrow, but it's cat. I remember when they wore that dress. She just wore that dress not too long ago. It's not a button in the back of it, so I could get her pajamas on. She's like, no, daddy, button. I got button. I got button. I'm done a lot of those spaghetti strap dresses. She likes long dresses. What the fuck? She was a girly girl. All right, so that ends part one of it, guys. You guys can see here all kinds of cap. Uh, we're going to go into part two here, but before we do part two, where it takes the polygraph, a.k.a. commonly known as the lie detector, we're going ahead and hit some of these uh, chats yes. real fast. Um, so we got here... Uh, Morgan Jones goes, W. Fed Myron, awesome breakdown. I like Angie. Shout out to you, Morgan Jones. Uh, JR Choi, shout out to you, JR. Goes, I shout, I, I sound like the most interesting guy at work Monday morning after watching episode of Fed It. Hey, that's what's up, baby. Yeah. Uh, we got uh, Carisha M goes, Myron, have you ever shot anyone when you were an agent? No, never have. Uh, Real Talk 621 goes, bro, do you think Tate, of all people, would continue to smoke if he had a clue he might have lung cancer? He's all about his health and working out, bro. He said he would never commit uh, self deletion. So smoking and cancer is next understandable michael me stroke one dollar thank you so much j world goes man's got that school principal edge up yeah <laughs> uh, uh let's see here i think uh john doe chris has updated status to widow children not anymore okay <laughs> um we got here jose do a slow-mo spin angie come on man what <laughs> once you stand up i drilled those wells that make the uh that those tanks were used for man this this hits close to home actually yeah colorado roughneck you work at the place where he um uh, dumped. got dumped the bodies. I, I remember got he, it right here. He, got, he come. Oh, he, oh, you got it on map. Yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and pull it up for y'all real fast. Okay. Uh, shout out to Angie pulling this up. Um, where? so this is where it was, Angie. Da, 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 da. This is uh, ba, 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 hang on. Yeah. This I'll was like you. a few miles from where they lived. Okay. Give me one sec. Okay. So I this is where right our here. boy Colorado Roughneck is at, pretty much. Yeah. So you can see them up here. They will live in uh, Boulder. So, yeah, yeah, hang on, man. Damn, out in the middle of nowhere, bro. Nowhere, yeah. Okay, so, so those he, are okay. That there it is. All right. He does. And it was these tanks right here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's where he dumped his family. Incredible, bro. And he he like uh, buried his wife like around here. Bumblecat. All right. Uh, Jason Burris goes. Myron, uh, will you do one about the Pain and Kane Gain crew as well as the Bling Ring crew? Uh, maybe. 
Uh, is Robert Pink Pinkton on that list? Angie Amara, Canada's biggest serial killer, fed 49 prostitutes Actually, to no. his hogs on his pig farm. No. You don't have that, that one? No. Has people asked that. for that one? No. That's the first time. This is time the first time. Robert Pickton, I guess the biggest Canadian serial killer. And then... Actually, I have it. Oh, you do have it? <laughs> yeah, he it is. Robert okay. Pickton, Canada's, Canada's most prolific serial killer. Okay. So he's the Zodiac killer of Canada, pretty much. Because I would say right. the top serial killer in the United States by far that everyone is most famous is, is between the Zodiac killer and Ted and Bundy. Um, Michael Fratello goes, picked up a copy of Why Women Deserve Less, flew through it, great read, great content. We also need to ban family Ant Hill Raiders. Okay, appreciate that. Um, so, and then so far, your book is a good read. Uh, girlfriend reading at 2W. Oh, I appreciate that, man. <laughs> Guys, do me a quick favor because the Yay. Matrix is definitely trying to attack the book. Um, like the, um, leave a five star review on Amazon. I would really appreciate that if y'all could. Um, and then we got here, Miami Dade Police. Haven't enjoyed myself so much since we caught that Ted Bundy guy. Yo, you guys profiles. are fucking hilarious, bro. Like the government profiles. Yo, they, they, they make government accounts. Someone, someone, uh, Myron Rand saved my life. That's what it's about, baby. Yeah, no, um, they make government accounts like uh, the IRS comments in when <laughs> no the way. girls talk about how much money they make from Sims. They'll be like, right. hey, uh, IRS is like, hey, you bitches better pay me my half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah man yeah yo the chat is undefeated uh and then let's see here uh l magico goes yo Marn, keep dropping all the fire content for us your book why women deserve less is a must read for every man free the tates women should read it too man it's not just about it's it's really about not being a simp supreme yeah. elvis one dollar appreciate that and then yeah y'all see in the chat miami day pdw yeah facts all right so we'll get back into it guys we're gonna go ahead and uh go into the second part of uh the chris watts um case and again this is from jcs guys so go ahead and like their video subscribe to their channel you see i am show them some love and then uh we got 941 likes and we got 1800 plus y'all in here uh guys get us to at least we should easily be at 1500 likes man okay let's get the engagement up so videos like this uh hit the algorithm more and uh yeah without further ado you have anything angie before we get into the second part no no really all right let's get into it I'm gonna find him, right? I need your help. When we find the guy who took him, what do you think we should do? This is what is known as a behavior-provoking question. An innocent person will usually give what is known as a draconian response. They will immediately respond with the harshest sentence possible for the crime they are falsely being accused of committing. A deceptive individual will often give an equivocating response. This means that they will fragmentize and divert from the question to a certain degree as a means to avoid responding to the query in its entirety. They're going to come home safe, correct? When you find the guy. When we find the guy, they're going to come home. Life in prison would be the, that's what I would, that's what I would think with two kids that are involved. And that's important, guys. So rising annotation at the end of the statement seeking approval. This happens a lot of the times with liars, right? Um. So whenever you're telling a lie, you'll phrase something in a way where, uh, you're seeking the individual that's questioning you's approval. This is like when you lie to your parents, right? Like your mom will say, D did you eat the cookies? And you're like, uh, no, I didn't. They should be there, right? Versus, yo, I didn't eat the cookies. No, it wasn't me. It was yeah. fucking, you know, the dog. It wasn't me. But when you uh, raise your voice in a certain way, you're saying it in a more passive manner, and you're seeking the approval of the accuser. That's what he's doing in this uh, interrogation, which is a big red flag for someone that is lying. Yeah, see, if you also compare mm -hmm. these, these interrogations with the one that you just put here, to, for an example. Oh, with the you, right there guy? We're going to call yeah. him the right there guy. The right what? Right there. There. Yeah, that's like uh, how people from like St. Louis talk, like Nelly. Okay. I like the way she do it right there. <laughs> that, like, I don't know if you ever heard that song, but. No. Uh, yo, somebody, yo, y'all need to, yo, if you guys know what I'm talking about in the chat, you throw on that Nelly, that's how we be talking. But sorry, go ahead. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, oh, oh, yeah, I, Chingy. I said Nelly? What the fuck? Yeah, Chingy. Sorry, guys. Yeah. But Nelly be talking like that too. But right. you're saying. But I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. But um, so if you compare this case and also the all the cases that we've done so far, like Casey Anthony, Corinne Clini, Dalia DiPolito, 
even the the Daniel Prince one, they are all like they're you can tell they're all guilty as fuck. So they will have like this type of behavior as well. Yeah. Opposite to the guy that you split as as an example. Yeah. Which like, is cool though, because he's like Casey Anthony as a man, like this Chris Watt guy. Fair enough. All right, let's get back into it now. Part two. What if you heard them? The bit that, that I'm not sure if like that penalty is even used as a use in Colorado. I'm not even sure what is the death penalty. Okay. Um, I mean, like if these kids are not alive, like there's no, there's nothing you can do to to cope with that, to make me cope with that. If these kids aren't alive, wouldn't a normal person say if my children aren't alive? Like, see, see how he's already distancing himself from the crime with his words, because in his head, he's like, OK, I want to distance myself from this action. So he's already exemplifying that through the way he conveys himself and speaks to this detective. If those kids are not OK. If those kids are not OK, bro, those are your seeds. Guys, these are his biological children, by the way. These are not stepchildren. What the hell? Can, can we keep talking about some complicated things? Sure. Some things are going to make you uncomfortable. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. You've done all right, we got subtitles, by the way, guys. Don't worry. On this one, we got the subtitles, all right? Very good in talking to me about this really hard conversation you guys had. Okay? Very good. That's sometimes hard. And I understand why sometimes... Someone in your position says, uh, doesn't want to tell me about that. Because please go help me find my kids, and you don't need to know about my, my marriage argument, okay? So I got to say, you've done very good at that, um, and I need you to keep doing that. So I need to ask you about um, your marriage and uh, infidelity. So, okay, tell me about it. Oh, here we go. <laughs> if she catches me cheating, I'll never tell her sorry. Let's see what he says. I have never cheated on my wife. Stop the cat. <gasps> and I fully suspect she has never done that to me. Oh, okay. The interrogator was already aware that Chris was cheating on his wife with a woman by the name of Nicole Kessinger. He had handed o oh, gotcha, bitch. Man. <laughs> over his phone earlier on this interview for what he thought was for the purpose of going through his and his wife's mutual contacts to look for potential suspects. Judging by Chris's bold-faced denial, it's safe to assume he deleted all of his correspondence with Nicole beforehand. Yet he was most likely unaware that the FBI have programs that can recover every single piece of of digital exchange sent from a device even long after it's deleted oh shit bruh FBI open up cause they're getting in that phone baby I'm a trained investigator over here right I see pictures of you from a few years and I can tell you guys this from my per personal uh, professional experience when I was an agent if I got a, um, right when you get a phone from an individual there's two ways you can go through it A they give you consent or B you get a search warrant and when you go through the phone you have a certified forensic agent, right? Or a CFA for short. You have them go through the phone. They can 100% extract all the deleted files from the phone and um, extract deleted text messages, pictures, etc. cetera. Um, Cause there's a bunch of metadata that's left from uh, when a phone is, um, when things are deleted off of a phone. So nothing is really safe like that when um, investigators get a hold of your phone. So him deleting those text messages, quite frankly. You stupid. And ain't gonna, it's not gonna help. But this is another example of a criminal thinking that they're smarter than they really are. Guys, also, we got 1,900 y'all in the chat. Guys, do me a favor. Like the video. It could be anywhere else in the world right now, but you guys are on here uh, Sunday night. I fed it with me and uh, Angie. Thank you for being here. Yes. Uh, just like the video. That's all we ask. Let's get to 1,900 likes so that we can get the engagement almost to 100%. Mm -hmm. And I see you standing before me now. Okay. 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 You've gotten pretty fit. Yeah. Okay. You can imagine when guys start cheating or want to cheat. That's what happens. Yes. So tell me about it. I did not cheat on my wife. Okay. What do I do to help you walk out of this room and not look like the person who's responsible? You have to trust me. I had nothing to do with <laughs> You got to trust me. Wait, what? Boom, God. And then also, I don't know if you guys caught it, but that was a very um, loaded question. He said, what do you, what's going to help me make you not be the guy that looks bad walking out of this room? Basically, what he wants him to do is say, all right, give me your story on, you know, why you're not the person that did this, 
right? Because he isn't really giving a story. He's just saying, I would never do this, but he's not giving a concrete story. The detective wants to pin him down on some kind of story so he can come back and challenge him with evidence later on that's irrefutable. With this act of like evil cruelty, whatever has happened here, because my love for these two girls and my wife, like I don't want anything to happen to them. I've never wanted anything to happen to them. No matter if me and my wife separate or not, or divorce or anything, I never wish harm on anybody, on a human being in general. Okay. Like just seeing that picture, like I need them, I, I want them just to run through that front door and just grab me mm-hmm. or just bear or just tackle me, knock me to the floor, bust my head off, I don't care. The amount of love I have for my family is exponential and I, it's never gonna die. Okay. And they need, I want them back. Okay. I have to have them back. L acting. <laughs> wow. W copy. Yeah. When you walk out of this room, there's nothing I can say to a room full of police officers that's going to convince them that you have nothing to do with this. Uh, you know what they think. I, I know what all that all of them. Yeah. Here's a guy who didn't call 911, who woke his wife up at a ridiculous hour because he was so guilty about something that he had to get it off his chest and say, I don't love you anymore, I'm leaving you. That didn't go well. Okay, so what happened? She told me she wanted me to wake her up before I left. That's why I didn't just wake her up, like, just to tell her this. Like, I woke her up. That's what she wanted to do, and we talked. Like, usually at 4 a.m. I wake up, I go down and work out. To say I wanted to talk to her about this. So what is he doing again? Upping the pressure, making him feel extremely uncomfortable. And you can see it in Chris Watts' hands here, how he's kind of holding himself here. This is something that someone does when they're typically agitated, right? Or very uncomfortable, which Remember, the detective, he's playing a game here. He's confronting him. He has a picture there of his family. Uh, he's standing. In, he's sitting in between Watts and the door. He's giving the silence treatment. So it makes Watts do what? Feel as though he's need to talk more and further dig himself in the hole. Good strategy by this detective. I love these girls. I love these girls so much. And this picture right here, Celeste and Bella, those are my life. I helped make those kids. There's I helped make those kids. Nothing in my life that means more to me than these kids. Wouldn't you say my kids if they were your children? It's a little weird there, isn't it? Nothing. Kids, that's, that's your life. That's your lifeline. That's everything. Like you make kids, they they come first before anything. Kids, spouse, family. That's what it's always been. Boom, Nothing you told me tonight makes sense. Nothing you told me tonight feels like the truth. Can we start over? Sure. That's been pretty intense, I can imagine. How are you feeling? <laughs> I've slept like two hours last night, so I'm like running on empty right now, but I, know. I can see it. So why don't I do this? I'm sure you don't mind if we take a break for the night. Um, I'm sure that you are um, feeling some of the pressure from me. Okay. I'm going to commit to you that we're going to stop working until we find them. Okay. Okay. And I want to commit to you that there is going to come a time when you're going to... I don't know if you guys noticed. So he's leasing off the pressure because he he said, we're going to find him, right? And this is obviously purposeful on the detective to create a little bit of comfort for him, right? So that he comes back tomorrow for the polygraph test, okay? At this point, he's like, all right, I've pushed this guy to the edge now. We need him to come back because we know he's a suspect. We need him to continue to cooperate. So I need to let him go 
He's going to already be uncomfortable because he already accused him during this uh, interrogation. But now he's got to let him go softly so he returns the following day. He doesn't want him to lawyer up. So he's like, okay, we're going to find him, assuming that there's another killer, even though the detective knows that he is the killer. Nice little subtle new, uh, you know, thing to add into the interview there. I feel this pressure from other people. I'm not the only one who thinks that there's a possibility you have something to do with this. Like another FBI agent, like, pressure, or like, this, like... Everyone. Okay. Everyone, Chris. Okay. The interrogator is clearly receptive to Chris's anxiety and endeavors to amplify this emotion before ending the interview. He wants to inflate Chris's apprehension as much as possible for the looming polygraph test that approaches the following day. Tonight when you go home, one or two things are going to happen. You're going to pass out because you're so tired, okay? That's probably not going to be what happens. Your head's going to go race, okay? So tonight when you lay down, and your head starts racing, there's going to be things that come to your mind, okay? This always happens, always. It's very natural. You're going to say, I wonder why he asked me that, okay? You're going to say, screw him. How dare he accuse me, okay? You're going to say, I wonder if they... Which is what he should have done during this interview, but he didn't. They thought of this, okay? And then you're going to say, I probably should have told him something, or this or that, okay? Those are the most common things. Um, when those thoughts come to your head, See, and he's saying that to get him to come back the next day. And here's other reason, too, guys, why he's letting him go. Uh, your sleep, right? The sleep, uh, the, um, the sleep from the night prior heavily affects your polygraph results. If you don't sleep, uh, you're more than likely going to give a, uh, a deceptive response or you're going to fail the polygraph. That's another reason why he wants him to leave now, because he wants to be able to say, oh, no, I let him out at this time. He had ample time to come in and do the polygraph the next day and get adequate sleep. So that's another strategy from the detective as well that they're not mentioning here. I'm sorry, too. Those kids have a good dad. The following discourse from the officer could be construed as the reframing technique, where an interrogator will try and shift the suspect's view of themselves from negative to positive as a means to lightening the iniquity of their crimes and increasing the chances of a confession. However, this is more likely what is known as passive accusation, where the interrogator is almost certain of the suspect's guilt and indirectly accuses and in some manner indignifies the suspect. This is made evident by the high praises the officer gives to Chris for extremely trivial deeds. A lot of dads don't get second pairs of clothes and cook eggs and give them snacks at night. You know, a lot of, a lot of men, that's woman for it, right? Well, I like to get involved. But you're not that kind of guy. Okay. Someone said he needs to manifest an Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these are L acting skills. I ain't gonna lie, bro. <laughs> so can we say that tomorrow at 11 o'clock? Yeah. We can do a polygraph? Sure. Here. Um, I appreciate you coming in tonight. Mm -hmm. All right. Give me a few minutes. Um, this is Tammy. Did you meet Tammy yesterday? No, I don't care. I always Tammy. Hi, Chris. How are you? So on this? Yeah, I know. It's, I'll explain what that is here in a little bit. But you don't have to worry. It, it's not on or anything right now. It's not going to It's not gonna buzz you or anything. <laughs> Obviously, you're probably... Okay. So this uh, right here, guys, is the polygrapher, this woman. And... Um, also, keep in mind, guys, that polygraphs, right, just to give you a quick little background on what they are, all commonly known as a lie detector test, what it does is it tests your bodily functions, okay? It doesn't necessarily tell if you're lying or not. It just tells your response, right, from a bodily, a bodily standpoint, two questions that are asked of you. So they give you a baseline of questions. What's your name? Are the lights on right now? What's your birthday? Questions that you already know the answer to that are simple that you're not going to lie about, right? Then they get a baseline. Once they get the baseline, then they start asking you the crazy questions that might or may not incriminate you. And then they see your responses. This could be sweat, heart rate, um, uh, what's it called? Um, sh uh, sh your leg shaking, a bunch of different uh, responses that the body gives when answering questions, right? That's why they have a bunch of things strapped up to you. Um, you know, every polygraph test is different. Every polygrapher is different on how they interpret the data. And every polygraph test uh, uses different measurements to read your bodily functions. But the point is, is to try to detect deception. It's a tool to detect deception. And then when the body responds a certain way, what they'll do is they'll hone in on that question that's giving a certain response to try to dig into the truth. But polygraphs themselves are not admissible in court because 
I mean, let's be honest here. There's a bunch of people that beat polygraphs that are sociopaths. For example, the Green River Killer, the last episode I did for y'all, uh, who killed 49 women, he passed a polygraph with flying colors. There's a lot of people that could pass polygraph tests um, when they're lying. So it's just merely a tool. I'm nervous about taking today's test on TV. Also, before we get into this, guys, do me a favor. I hate to ask this again. We got 2,000 plus of y'all watching right now. You could be anywhere else in the world, but you're here with us. So thank you so much. Now, I only ask, like the video. You don't got to donate a dollar to the, ch to the chat. Again, I do this channel because I do enjoy it. Um, we're at 1.1K likes, but there's over 2,000 y'all watching right now. So get me the 2K likes so that we can go ahead and get this up in the algo. Let's keep going. You ever think something is wrong with you if you weren't nervous about coming in here to take a polygraph? Yeah. Even if people are like, I don't have anything to hide, it is nerve-wracking. Okay. I have taken tons of polygraphs obviously in my training um i went to 10 weeks for training i've been a polygrapher for about for about five years um i went to the best school in the country so i want you to have confidence in the fact that you had nothing to do with this disappearance like we're going to find that out today okay i have the best training that they offer in the united states um i we use the most validated testing um that was no way i'm going to ask you the question so believe me if you had nothing to do with this i will be able to show them that today this is psychological pressure. Also, keep in mind, guys, that a lot of innocent people fail polygraphs as well because a lot of people get nervous. So um, it's not a fail safe, guys. It's just a tool to try to figure out the truth. But in general, uh, polygraphs, I ain't gonna lie to you. A lot of people say that they're BS. They're pseudoscience. Um, and, I would, and I would err more on the side of it. Pseudoscience is a tool that will get you somewhere, but they're not always fail, uh, you know, foolproof guised as reassurance. It's not a routine procedure during the pretest phase of a polygraph exam, yet this technique will be used when the suspect's guilt is almost conclusive. Polygraphs are not a foolproof system, and they can be beaten, but with a heightened state of anxiety, it becomes considerably more challenging and unlikely. On this occasion, the polygrapher distinctly applies this technique for maximal effect. There's actually only two ways you can fail a polygraph, okay? Um, the first way would be if you fail to follow my instructions. I'm going to give you a lot of instructions today about how to so still how to answer questions, things like that. So if you fail to follow those instructions, you will not pass today's test, okay? The second way would be if you choose to lie to me today. You know, if you did have something to do with their disappearance, um, it would be really stupid for you to come in and take a polygraph today, right? Like, it would be really dumb. Like, you should not be here right now sitting in this chair if you had anything to do with... <laughs> stupid! And what is he doing? He's there. And the little girl's disappearance, okay? Well, yeah, we just, everything flourished from there. Like in 2011, I, pr I proposed to her over in Ocean Isle Beach. And she was just sitting there crying with a little eviction notice, and she had on, she, had, she recorded it. It was really, it was an amazing day to see that. And then she, she left. She was, she was, I was there. Like, she had a midwife for this one. So, like, they actually had me, like, oh, you can stand here and, like, you know, catch her and, like, look, but it, Fluff came out like so fast that like I barely had a chance to go like this and they moved me out of the way because she just like came out. The polygrapher will also obtain the examinee's version of the facts regarding the specific issues under investigation. I was just hoping that I would get that knock on the door or a phone call or a text. I mean, her phone, I mean, they have her phone. Like, hopefully, maybe it's a number I don't know. Hopefully, it's like, you know, like a burner, a burner phone or some, some, kind of, some kind of like phone she bought and she could just text me and call me like, hey, I'm okay, something, or just get a knock on the door and then the kids just run in. I miss like the kids like sitting at the dinner table and like having to tell them to eat their dinner and like I miss them throwing the chicken nuggets at me, like I was, I just want to find them. I want them to come home safe, like wherever they are, I hope they are safe. And I really, I really hope they can just come home. It makes me feel like, all right, maybe somebody has her that's not that's not keeping her safe or something terrible i, I would say what, what do you say angie probably the worst acting yes yeah I would absolutely say, is he worse than worse than casey anthony you think well, yeah yeah he's worse than casey anthony casey anthony kind of almost believed her lies but she this, did yeah she, did. she believed her lies because she was a, a psycho but this guy just l acting all around what's happened and that is that's the nightmare and what was that terrible thing to you? somebody hurt them. 
Chris recounts a brief summary of the events and states multiple vague possibilities for his family's disappearance. The polygrapher then starts to elect specific timelines for Chris to give his account on. Um, you said the next thing you know is her getting into bed with you, is that right? I could not felt her getting bed. We didn't say anything because I just, I just kind of felt it. Okay. Do you know if she was on her phone or like how any of that works? I don't, I don't think she was on her phone. Was she mad at all? I mean, being crying, crying like she was, crying like I was, I mean, yeah, I mean, she was upset. But I mean, it was, it was, it comes with that kind of conversation. In the next moments, you will see another subterfuge of psychological pressure, this time disguised as routine questioning procedure. I know it's totally awful to think about, but what are ways, because I need to make sure that you know what I'm talking about, what are ways that you can make someone disappear? Boom, book that. Oh man, she's- You triggered my trap card! She's, she's setting that trap! I mean, like, as you're talking about, like, what I've seen, like, on the movies, or, like, how you, like, how people, uh, if you read about other people, I mean, when you hire somebody. Like a hitman? Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, yeah. I'm just being honest. No, but that's what I want. That's what I want, because I want you to go through all of these scenarios in your head, because I want you to know for sure what I'm talking about when I say that, you know, asking you if you physically caused her disappearance. Okay. Translation, I want to see how you potentially killed your family. Like, like you'd hire somebody or you have a somebody you know that that would do it. I mean, it's like, I don't, I mean, it's hard. And, it's a hard and I know this stuff. It's a hard but, question to answer. Right. Because uh, I didn't, I had nothing to do with this disappearance. Right. So like, I don't even want to think about like, if, I, if, if you're asking like how I would do it. Like, no, I, anyone. Like, anyone how, would, how would anyone cause someone else's disappearance? I mean, you would... Like, you would cause someone's disappearance by murdering them. Yes. Do you agree with that? Yes. So what different physical ways could you cause someone's disappearance through murder? You could stab someone, stab right? Stab someone, shoot someone, hit them with a blunt object. Um. Okay, cautious not to mention actual causes of death, strangulation for his wife and smother, uh, smothering of his daughters. He doesn't mention that, of course, for obvious reasons. I mean, use a weapon, like gun or a knife. I mean, okay. you could... You smother someone. Smother someone. <laughs> he really didn't want to say that one. He really didn't want to say that one. He could strangle someone. Hang someone. I mean, yeah, he can. All that kind of things. I mean, it's hard to even think about that kind of stuff right now. Mm -hmm. He could strangle someone. You know, yeah, it's hard when she mentions the ways that you actually killed your family to think about it. Someone, you could drown someone. Yeah. You could shock someone to death. Um, you could burn someone alive. Um. What other ways can you think of? As far as like, like lure them into a trap, I guess. So what do you mean? What? Like, you know, like have somebody waiting like around the corner and like, you know, I sure. Uh, All right, so you get some more answers. Hit by a car, kidnapped, locked in a room, poisoned, beaten into a coma. They're in a coma. Sure. Um, so if I ask you that question on the test, Chris, are you going to have any issue with that? About you like, physically causing like going through every single one of those? Yeah, like that would be a way okay. you could cause someone's disappearance. Okay. Uh, no, I, I can definitely, like, I can pass. I mean, I, I think you murder them, you could kidnap them, you could take them to another country, you could, you know, bury them in your backyard. You could, yeah. you could do a million things yeah. as far as. Um, trying to conceal them, yeah. right, so that no one can find them. Yes. Because at, at this point, she wow. Gone. Take it to so consideration. Like, what was that? Take it to consideration that she doesn't know at this point, like of the interview, she doesn't know what he did to his family. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting, right? Yeah. Um, and you guys can know you guys notice the contrast between her and the male detective that interviewed him the day before. She's a lot more disarming. She's a lot nicer. She's giving him a significant um, uh, amount of space. Also. Notice how she's not sitting in between him and the door, okay? She's here, back to the wall. He's closer to the door, which is over this way. So 
Um, because obviously a polygraph in itself is a very stressful situation. So she's trying to make him somewhat as calm as possible and be a little bit nicer so that she can get more information out of him. I'm not asking you about guilt. I'm not asking you about, did you make her feel so horrible that she ended up leaving? I'm saying that you were the one that physically caused her to disappear, either by murder, kidnapping, you know, all of those other things okay. that we went through, okay? You want me to list, you want me to list all those? Like, no, no, no. Okay. You're just going to say no to that question. Okay. Right? When I ask you if you physically caused Shanann's disappearance, okay. your answer should be what? No. Right. So do you have any issues with that at all? And no. have any question about what I would mean when I was? No, that was, that's that's totally like, I just like going through all those. Uh, <laughs> that's right. a lot to really think about. Right. Like but trying to figure out like, I, yeah, that was. I'm going to have you take a bath and break. Thank We've you. been in here quite a while. You're going to be taking what's called a directed lie polygraph. So what that means is there are going to be test questions on the test where I want you to lie. I know it seems kind of weird, but you're going to know which questions these are, and they're going to be easy to answer. They're all going to start with before 2018. The directed lie test has three types of questions, known truth questions. These are easy questions to answer, such as, are you sitting down? Or are you wearing shoes? They serve two purposes. What'd Real quick, earlier? for this guy, if, bro, stop doing videos on shit cases. We, all we want is making murder the biggest, most famous case of all time. Niggas even went on Dr. Phil. Bro, you got to understand that the world doesn't revolve around you, my friend. People <laughs> request a bunch of different cases. This is one of them. We typically go off of what most people ask for, and this was definitely at the top of the list. So, hey, man, it, it, we'll probably get to making a murderer, but you got to understand and be patient that a lot of people are requesting other stuff. Uh, making a murderer isn't even in the top. Is that even in the top 10 for requests? No. Yeah. So, uh, don't worry. We will get to it, man. The first purpose is to provide a baseline reading for when the subject is telling the truth and should elicit very little bodily responses. The second purpose is to disconnect the examinee's thought patterns between each question as a means for resetting their cerebration for a more accurate reading. Control questions. These are what the polygrapher just explained to Chris. Whenever she says, before 2018, at the start of a question, Chris will know he is purposely supposed to lie. Each of these questions are deliberately constructed that all answers will be responded with no. Relevant questions. These relate specifically to the crime being investigated, and the examinee will know that they are supposed to respond truthfully. A guilty subject will show a much stronger reaction to the relevant questions than to the control questions, even though they will be lying on both of them. This is due to the immediate threat posed by the relevant questions. So I'm going to say before 2018, did you ever lose your temper with someone you cared about? And you're going to say no, because you're telling a lie. Awesome. The test is about to begin. Please remain still. Did you write the number? All right. So they're doing the fake test here to make sure he understands the rules. Number one. No. Did you write the number three? No. Did you write the number five? No. This portion of the test is complete. Please remain still while I take the instrument out of operation. Can you kind of relax? It's feel. This is the last time the polygrapher will have any correspondence with Chris before the real test begins. She gives him an initial compliment in a reassuring tone. You did great. Uh, was... You remember the lie and everything. That was awesome. That was... <laughs> This momentary boost in his confidence is then abruptly ripped away as he receives the following information. So <laughs> you obviously are a really bad liar. Have, have people told you that before? Like the second you tell a lie, like they can tell. Please like, someone tell him. <laughs> someone told him finally that he's a terrible liar. Man. Holy. The acting skills are awful. Because the second you lied to the number three, like I don't know if you heard me clicking, but I like turned down the sensitivity because you're starting to go off the page. So that is what I need to see as a polygrapher because that tells me that you know it's wrong to tell a lie um, and you're actually having a significant reaction when you lie. So that is awesome. So thank you for being a wrong okay. liar. I, no, that's a good yeah. thing. That's a good thing. We don't want to be good liars. So. Thank you for being a horrible liar. Um, and that just shows me that, you know, obviously on the test when they're asking, you know, significant stuff about your wife, um, if you're lying to that, it's going to be even 10 times more amplified. So I appreciate that. I appreciate that very much, more than you know. So that was awesome. And the coolest thing about this is right now, there's only one person in this room that knows what the truth is. And in about five minutes, there's going to be two of us. So 
That's the coolest part. Okay. And then I can go share that. (laughs) Yeah. Cool for her. Terrible for you, bro. (laughs) But again, she's, she's, you know, she's almost infantilizing him a bit. And the reason why, guys, so that he feels more comfortable. If you guys notice, she's coming in with more of like a motherly slash teacher slash happy aunt type vibe to make him more comfortable when she's asking these probing questions. Okay, which is a big 180 from the detective that was grilling him the night before. Put them out there. Okay. Okay. All right, you ready? Let's do it. The test is about to begin. Please remain still. Do you understand that I will only ask you the questions we have discussed? Yes. Regarding Shanann's disappearance, do you intend to answer all of the questions truthfully? All right, here we go, guys. All right, before we get into this polygraph part, I'm going to just play it uninterrupted. I want it so you guys can get it in full. But before I do that, I need y'all to like the video, okay? Yeah, guys, like and subscribe. Like the video, guys, subscribe to the channel. We got uh, 2,132 of you guys in here right now, well over 2,000, y'all. That means we should be at 2,000 likes easy, all right? So get the likes up, guys. I hate asking for this, but the only reason I have to is because you guys don't like the video, bro. Stop being ninja watchers. Smash that like button. It's free, costs you nothing, and it'll help us where I don't have to stop. Keep uh, have to keep stopping the show. It's like the goddamn video. All right, let's get back into it. Yes. Is your first name Christopher? Yes. Before 2018, did you ever lose your temper with someone you cared about? No. Did you physically cause Shanann's disappearance? No. Were you born in 1985? Yes. Before 2018, did you ever say anything out of anger to a loved one? No. Are you lying about the last time you saw Shannon? No. Are you now in the state of Colorado? Yes. Before 2018, have you ever wanted to hurt someone to get even with them? No. Do you know where Shannon is now? No. Stop the cap. Stop the cap. This portion of the test is complete. Please remain still while I take the instrument out of operation. All right, how'd you feel? Same over all of it? Thank you. I was to everything. All right. For you. We'll be right back. Okay. So he's watching a video of his kids, all right, which is very weird. I don't know if this was an act by him or uh, he actually does genuinely feel like crap, but this is, this is a little strange. Imagine, right? Go, go, like go into a dream world. You mercilessly killed your family. Now you're getting grilled by the police about it. And then you just did a polygraph test where you're nervous as hell. You know, you're more than likely on camera and you start watching a video of your, uh, of your family and children. Like, what is going on? What? Man. What the fuck? I think he sees that his world is closing uh, closing in on him. Oh my gosh, I didn't forget part of it, did I? <laughs> All right, we're about to get the verdict here, guys. Let's see what happened with this polygraph test. So I brought Graham in here. Oh, and the dude is back now. <laughs> Talk about tension time. We want to talk to you about the results, okay? Sure. Okay, so the um, it is completely clear that you were not honest during the testing, and I think you already know that. Um, you failed miserably. Uh, a bitch. Definitely. Fatality. Yeah, big hell right there. Failed the test. Not passed the polygraph test. Okay. Okay. So now we need to talk about what actually happened. I feel like you're probably ready to do that. Uh, I didn't. I didn't lie to you on that polygraph. I promise. Chris, I, I'm. I'm. I'm not stuck. I. <laughs> Just stop for a minute. Take a deep breath. And I want you to take a deep breath right now.
All right. And that's the end of part two. So we're going to go into the final part here, part three. But before I do, uh, I'll hit some of these chats real fast, guys. Uh, we got here. Um, you guys are funny. Yeah, you guys are. Mr. Stewart, 20 bucks. Great content. Thank you so much. Like the video, guys, since you guys think it's great content. Uh, ain't nobody giving you all breakdowns like this from a former investigator standpoint. Uh, Jacob Les, Angie, can you share the list of names you have written down already? Okay. You can. Uh, yeah, you want to give the top 10, maybe? Uh, Yeah. Okay. Well, we we have done a few already. Okay. I think. Hang on. You want me to? I'll read the chats and, and when she's getting okay. her notes right now because she has well, a bunch. Well, it's right here. Um. Oh, you got it. Okay. Yeah, Ready? Gary Ridgeway, you did already. Uh, this is Chris Watts, the Black Mafia family. Okay, BMF. We've started that one. Mm -hmm. We have started B BMF. We found a documentary that we're going to use for y'all. The problem yeah. is that it's hard to find. Uh, well, I know what the documentary is, but we're trying to find it in high quality for you guys. Yes. Yeah. On so. YouTube. Yeah. Um, Ailing Werners. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, John Bonnet Ramsey. Okay. Tory Lanes. I covered Tory Lanes already, though. Did they say specifically what in Tory Lanes? No, but a bunch of people have been asking for for the case. So. All right. Maybe. So in know. the chat, let us know what you guys want, particularly with Tory Lanes, because I already I already covered him. I did two episodes on Tory Lanes. Right. But go ahead, continue on. Golden State Killer. Okay. Yep. We've we've studied that one. Mm -hmm. Lorena Bobbitt, Aaron Hernandez, uh, Todd Callhelp. Ooh. The Amazon Review Killer. Amazon Review Killer? Yeah. What's his name? Todd Cod Cop Help. Something like that. I don't Todd know. Cop Chad, if you know it, just okay. drop the someone, name Someone Someone correct her. Her English sucks. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, David Berkowitz, the son of Sam. Okay. Yep. That's... And Ed Kemper. That's Those are the top like 10? The top. Yeah. Okay. Bam. So that's your top 10 right there for you guys. For all you guys that keep asking, What's... like, yo. <laughs> Myron, cover Monko, this case, Monko. cover that case. That's the top 10 that you guys yeah. have been requesting. Angie's been compiling a list. Uh, what's number one on there right now? I it mean, was Gary I, don't, Ridgeway, right? I don't have it as a prior, like, top, you know? like Okay, I just but these are the ones like, that you random. get the most of? Yes. But Gary Ridgeway, we did that one. That was up yes. there. And then, uh, what was the other one? Uh, the one that you mentioned earlier, that's also highly requested. The Alex Black Moore. Mafia family? Alex Moore, though. Oh, Murda. Uh, Murda. Yeah, 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 yeah. We we might that do that one because that one's trending right now. Memphis so. three case too. You keep asking about that. I don't know much Memphis about who? that. Memphis three. Memphis three. That's the name of, of it. I don't know what yeah, it is. I don't know what that is. Okay. Memphis three. I don't know. You you keep asking about that too. Okay. Um. But yeah, those are the most requested ones. All right. Cool. Uh. All right. So I'll go back to the chats real quick. Um. We got here. Uh, Albo Ace goes, we need one of those polygraphs for three or fours on a night show. Facts. Uh, let's see here. Albo Ace goes, bro, hearing uh, hearing him try to explain himself is so cringe. Even the average Joe can see right through it. Facts. Uh, Quan McDonald says FaceTime, and I think that was the follow-up from his other question. Um, Sephiroth702, if Cheyenne and the kids are radio stars, and Chris Watts is a video. Pause. Okay. Uh, Colorado Roughneck, the tanks are 3M Three me n of Ragan, one hour northwest of Denver. Okay, uh, he's saying where the tanks are. Shout, uh, R.J. Robertson goes. Shout out to you. Can you guys check out the documentary called The Liberty Seven, a Miami case where they tried to scam Al Qaeda? I think it would be a good documentary to review while you're researching another case. You'll enjoy it. Okay, Liberty Seven. Yeah, it looks like a terrorism case. Liberty Seven. Yeah, right. I haven't done a terrorism case in a while. I might do a Hezbollah one for you guys. Can they recover Facetimes? Uh, I don't know if they can recover full on FaceTime calls because it doesn't record, but they could definitely recover that you made a FaceTime call. New England, not Northwest. Okay, Northeast, he means not Northwest. Okay. And then Flatbed Day. Yo, I would see you do an interview with Michael Francis, former mafia member. Yeah, we could do that in the future. Uh, Kevin Ubaldo goes, Hey, Myron, you should do the Roman Sosa case, which he faked his debt to catch his wife hiring a hitman to murder him in 2015. Okay. Wow, interesting. Okay. Okay. Uh, we did say, you guys need to see the Dahlia DiPolito video if you guys want to talk about Hitman. That yeah. was hilarious. Yo, Mari, keep dropping all the fire content for us. Your book, Why Women Deserve Less, is a must-read for every man. Free the tates. I appreciate that. And then uh, West Bo goes, uh, JCS isn't making content now, sadly. Go to yeah, yeah, he's a great channel, true. man. He, uh, hopefully he gets back in the game uh, and makes content again. Uh, did I catch, did I miss anything? Oh, Fresh's Dog. Set of the three or four to the polygraph for when they say their breakup was mutual. Yeah, bro. We all know that's a cap right there, man. Not the cap. When a girl says it was mutual, it means that the dude broke up with her. Nine out of ten times. Because girls love to say that they're the ones that break up. Especially since they initiate most of the breakups. Myron, do the Kai Hatchet Hitch Hiker next. Never heard of it? Me neither. Have you, has that come across? Okay. Has no. it come across you? And then Michael Me Stroke, super sticker. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. All right. We're about to get into the third part of this broadcast, guys. With Chris Watts. So uh, we'll do a quick recap, actually. Let's do a quick recap. Yeah. So 
Oh, BMF with Big Meat should be a dope episode. Yes, we're already on that one for y'all. Uh, right, we actually know exactly what we're gonna cover. Um, that one's gonna come very soon. It's just that we are trying to get that documentary and high quality for y'all. Uh, because the documentary we're gonna use is a little bit older, but it's very good. Um, so okay, quick little recap. So, wife, uh, the wife's best friend calls Chris, aka Chris Watts, says, "Hey." I haven't heard from your wife, blah, blah, blah. She's worried. She noticed that the car is there, but she hasn't heard from her. So she calls Chris Watts. He tells her, no, don't call the police, et cetera. It's fine. I'm going to come back. She calls the police anyway. Police show up. Chris Watts shows up, displays strange behavior, as you guys saw in the body cam from before, texting on his phone, not making our direct eye contact, surveillance footage that might be iffy here and there. Um, and he can't really explain himself. So the police bring him in for questioning, gives a bunch of more uh, odd answers. Then... Uh, for one day of interviewing contradictory stories, etc., doesn't make sense. Then the second day, he goes ahead, does a polygraph, fails a polygraph, and that's where we are now. Now the police officers, the female detective who did the polygraph, and the male detective that grilled them the first night, now they're going to go ahead and start confronting him and push for a confession. All right, do James Holmes, the movie teacher shooter, uh, Colorado. Oh yeah, on the movie Dark Knight. I've I've heard of that one. Um, cool. So we'll go back to the documentary, guys. We got two thousand plus y'all in here, twenty one hundred to be exact. Like the video, let's get to 2,000 likes, guys. I see 1.5. There's no reason why we shouldn't be at 2,000 likes at this point. We've been covering the case extensively. Uh, let's go ahead and go into part three of this broadcast. Angie, you got anything for the people before we go? I actually, um, I've, they haven't mentioned any of the background of the story of the family and the mistress and the wife and anything. And I think it's important, but I can like break it down like after. So yeah, you, play you, the video. Oh, you think it'll hurt the, okay. You yeah. want to do it after? Okay. I didn't lie to you on that polygraph, I promise. Uh, stop the cap! Chris, I'm, 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 I'm going to stop. It's time. I'm, just I'm, stop for a minute. Take a deep breath. I want you to take a deep breath right now. There's a reason you feel sick to your stomach. And when people hold stuff inside, it makes you physically ill. And I can just tell on your face, I can tell you tell from the second you walked in that you were wanting to just come clean and just be done with this. This is a technique known as social exchange, an interpersonal persuasion strategy in which the interrogator provides the suspect with a psychological reward in return for the information they need. In this case, she's trying to convince Chris that the alleviation of mental weight is a worthy trade for a confession. She does this in a manner that protects his self-esteem by giving him appreciative reinforcements. And I appreciate that because you knew sitting down in that chair that you weren't gonna pass today and you knew I was going to find out because I told you that. And then you continued to say, knowing that you could, at the end, say, you know what? I just need to get this off my chest. Everything that I've, just, I've told you, I did not lie on this polygraph. I am, I don't know how much I could, I could tell you right now. Like, I did not. It's, it's, not I even, it's not even an option right now because you did not pass the polygraph. I so I know you were being deceptive. So that's not even an issue, an issue right now. The issue right now is, what happened to Shanann, Bella, and Celeste. The following tactic is called the futility technique, a building block to induce a sense in a suspect that any resistance on behalf of their cause is futile due to the overwhelming evidence against them. This was obviously not the case, as polygraphs are not admissible evidence, and Chris was in fact still free to leave at this point. That's the issue, right? And just so you guys know, with the futility technique, um, I used to employ this a lot when I was an agent myself, right? But I was not as polite about it. I would literally go in there sometimes and be like, listen, just like this. Listen, man, I don't need your information. I don't need your testimony. I don't need your this interview. We already got you dead to rights. I got pictures. I got people that are cooperating against you. It is what it is. If you want to tell your side, fantastic. But other than that, I really don't need, an, uh, need your interview right now to indict you. So you go ahead and pick what you want to do. And I'll leave them there. Uh, you know, put them in the jail, come back maybe a day or two later, right? And then try again. And sometimes when you put people in jail, they spend a night or two in there, the county jail, it really changes their mindset. And sometimes letting them know that you got them dead to rights works quite a bit, especially when they want to be hardheaded, right? But this is the importance of doing your own independent investigation where you're not relying on a confession. Because when you rely on a confession, oh man, there's so many issues that could arise.
So that's what I would do when I would use the futility technique personally. Let's get back into it. Every, every you know, investigator has their own tactic. Now, Chris, okay. So let's talk about that. I know, I know you want to tell us. I, I, can, I can see it in your face. Holding this lie in is going to do nothing for you. I, I know that it's like, okay. I'm not like trying to like cover things up. Like if, yeah, but you kind of are because and, and no, it's normal. This is no longer an interview to collect information. The steps of asking questions and receiving answers is over, and the interrogators are now in the process of leading the suspect into a state of mental exhaustion. The detectives will attentively watch for denials and stop them before they can be voiced. Letting the suspect deny his guilt will only increase his confidence and prolong his cerebral stamina. Normal people would do that. Normal people that make a mistake and, and that's and that's uh this is that's true guys whenever people are lying like that that's when i would give them the futility technique that i said yo listen i already got you dead to rights dude i don't really need, if you're gonna lie it is what it is i don't need your testimony and then i'll just end it there and just throw his ass in jail come back a two a day or two later after they spend some time um behind bars because that always changes people's opinion but in this case they're going to keep trying to push for the for the confession but with the more they deny you don't want them to get that confidence where they're like oh no because a lot of these crooks you know, they'll believe their own lie and they'll sit there in delusion and you don't want to deal with that crap. It's annoying. Initially, you're going to go, I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't do anything. That's normal. I would expect that. That's a natural reaction that someone's going to initially lie about something like that and then eventually tell the truth. So this is your eventually telling the truth time. This is where, this is where the rubber meets the road, Chris. Like, don't let this continue any longer, please. I'm not trying to make anything continue. Like, I want them back home. Like, But you know they're not coming back home. You know I, that. I don't know in the back of my head. I'm, I hope they come back home. But you know they're not. Chris, Timmy and I are confused. Yeah. And here's what we're confused about. I told you that we've done some work overnight. Yeah. I told you that we've got a lot of leads. Okay, that wasn't a lie. Uh -huh. We know a lot more than we think we do. The dossier technique is a variant of the futility technique, the only difference being that the detectives are far more cryptic and often deceptive about the evidence they have. This will hint at things in a vague manner for the purpose of escalating a suspect's uncertainty. Where are they? I don't know where they're at. I, honestly, I do not know where they are at. If I could have my babies back home right now, I would. I want them back. I want everybody back. That is the God's honest truth. Although the detectives want to intensify Chris's psychological stress levels, they do not want him to become reactively agitated, as this could lead him to objecting and resisting every step of the way, and the interrogation will never get off the ground. It also significantly increases the chances of him requesting legal counsel and ending the interrogation outright. This elicits the interrogator to change approach and utilize what is known as the ego up technique, where the detective will build on the self-respect of the suspect through positive reinforcement. It is very surprising to me, and it warms my heart that you're the type of dad who can pack a bag in the morning. Yo, y'all got Angie dead. You guys are roasting this detective, this female detective, and she's in the back fucking dying right now. I had to mute her mic. <laughs> yo, yo, this chat got no chill, man. Literally losing her sides over here, bro. <laughs> yo. <laughs> Y'all cooking this chick, man. Yo, <laughs> like the video, man, for the best chat ever. 2200 y'all in here, man. Let's get back in. <laughs> you know what you're supposed to put in there? You know just what to put in there as a backup in case they have an accident. Okay? You know what the clothes to put in there? You know what they have for breakfast? You know what they have for a snack and a dinner and a nighttime snack? You can tell me the book you read to your daughters. Okay? I know you love them. But you weren't here today lying about something else. We need to talk about that, okay? That's your daughter. I know. And this is very good. Keep I, I, I saw her, took my breath away, and I never thought in a million years that could happen. Yeah. I never felt that way about anybody, like, anybody in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. I'm not proud of it. She accused me of it. I denied it. I, I actually just honor her, and I feel horrible for it. Like, she was pregnant, and 
it was, I don't want to, I didn't hurt her. You're doing a good job. This is the Chris that I knew would come out today. This is the Chris who tells the truth because you're a truth teller. I don't think this girl did anything to hurt anybody. When you leave her out of it, okay. you get back to your wife and your daughters. Okay. Where are they? That I do not know. Scoliosis Susie. Someone said a W Karen, but L chiropractor. What the fuck? That was what I was holding. You know, the chill got no, the check got no chill, man. <laughs> Bring back, like, I didn't know, like, what I did. I know, Chris, in the interview today, you weren't asked about infidelity. You were asked about, that was, I was holding back from last night. That's when what you talk. feel today. That's not how that works. Here's the challenge that we have. We knew about Nikki, and so we didn't need to ask you about her in the polygraph. We just didn't need to, because we knew, okay? And so that's why we didn't ask you, because we knew the answer, okay? We're very, very... Someone said the irony of his breath away comment. <laughs> someone, someone said yeah. Juice with his <laughs> What happened? Someone said Beetle Juice with his scoliosis. <laughs> <laughs> Beetle Juice with scoliosis. <laughs> it should have been the happiest time of your marriage. Okay, you and Shanann, this should have been the happiest time. She's making a little money, she's making good money. You're making great money, you both have a job. You have beautiful kids, you have a beautiful house, you're in Colorado, clean air, good people. Okay, and on top of that, you look pretty good now. You're pretty fit, okay? This should have been a time in your marriage where you guys were happy and thriving and productive, okay? And I believe that Shanann's the reason none of that happened. This is called the how and why solution, a technique that allows the suspect to admit a lesser act and blame the victims, while at the same time minimizing the crime and motivations of his actions. I believe that she's a controlling person. Maybe doesn't listen to you as much as she should. I think that she can do whatever she wants and you can't. I used to do this a lot, guys, when I was an agent myself. Like, if I caught someone, like, smuggling drugs or something like that, I'd be like, listen, man, it's not like you killed anybody. You just move with some dope. It ain't that big a deal. Boom. Right? That's called minimizing. Okay. I think if you were to go to a restaurant, she would order whatever the hell she wants. It's hard to minimize, though, when a guy killed his family. That's an L. <laughs> and as soon as you order a nice steak, she says, well, buddy, it's because you're a good person. And I think that she started on the path to leave the marriage. Okay. It's ironic that we're talking about you and Nikki. I think that she was the one who started on that path first. What do you think about that? I wouldn't have thought about that. Yeah. The other thing I think is interesting is, even though she is that type of person that's controlling, doesn't listen, does what she wants, is walking away from her kids, here you are defending her. Because to your core, you want to take care of the people you love. Okay. And that's the reason why we want to give you an opportunity today to just help us find them. Okay. Chris, right now your dad's outside. He flew across the country to help. Okay. Oh, hold on. They unlocked the secret. They brought his dad in. You're lying to him. You're lied to everyone you talk to. And they all bought it. Will you please help us find your babies? I want to find them. I've told you over and over, I want to find everyone. Can you understand that some of this just doesn't make sense? I was. How is it possible that a woman and two kids are just completely gone off the face of the earth? I promise you, I'm. I have nothing on my hands that I did nothing to those kids or her to make them vanish. As the interrogation goes on, the constant and relentless psychological pressure essentially puts Chris at the edge of his ability to function cognitively. It's a slow and methodical process of breaking down his resistance while maintaining a balance of pugnacious and reassuring psychological techniques. I just, I just find it hard to hear you talk about having this emotional 
you know, conversation with Shanann and you're bawling and crying together and you have not shed one tear in two days that you've been here. No, no. Not one. And I- L acting skills, man. Even they're catching it. I, help me understand that because I don't get it. You're, these are your baby girls oh. and you have not shed one tear over them not being around. Chris, I, 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 I lose my four-year-old in the store for 10 seconds and I start to go panic, panic. I have not seen any of that from you at all. Help me understand that. I love those girls. And I'm sure a bunch of you guys in the chat that have kids or might be uh, parents, mothers, fathers, etc. you guys understand, you know, the panic of if you can't find your kid. So you guys already know that this guy's an L actor to another degree. I, I would never do any just because I haven't shed a tear. You get yeah, no, that's weird. Is that know. weird? Don't don't look into that. Like I don't love my well, kids. Tell me, my explain wife. to me. You're you're crying with your wife that you're leaving her. Yeah. But you don't cry that your two little baby girls. I'm hoping are they're there. still around. Some. I'm hoping they're still somewhere. It, now he starts to cry. Hmm. What the hell? In the next moments, you will see step seven of the read interrogation technique known as the alternative question, where the suspect is given an alternative and far more morally acceptable choice for what happened. Chris, did Shanann do something to them? And the read technique, guys, is a very old law enforcement style of interviews where um, it's not really as practiced as much now, but a lot of agencies still utilize it. And there's still good, very good parts of it. No, I don't know. I'm serious. I have no clue. So you would have known. They didn't leave the house. Did Shanann do something to them, and then did you feel like you had to do something to Shanann? They were at the house when I left. They were there. They weren't there. They didn't leave. They vanished. They were the only way they could have left is in your truck. Something Something happened in the house that you know about. We know that something happened to all three of them. But I want to know, did something happen to these baby girls first that you had to take into your own hands and deal with? You had to clean it up for Shanann. Chris, you got to tell us. There's something that happened to these baby girls. Look at them. I know. Before you came in, I was watching videos. We have no doubt you love these girls with all of your heart. Stop the cap. No, that's a lie. You wouldn't have smothered them then. Guys, we got 2.2K y'all watching. We only need 400 more likes to hit 2,000, man. Let's hit 2,000 so we can hit almost 90% engagement, guys. Again, it's really important for the YouTube algorithm to get the likes up on the video. Also, comment below, you know, for the algo. That really helps with this video as well. Like I said before, y'all don't got to donate a dollar. The only thing I ask is like the video, subscribe to the channel. Comment below um, for the algo. I have no doubt. But we make mistakes. That's okay. It's what we do with those mistakes that make us who we are. Chris, it seems like you're thinking about it right now. What are you thinking about? She could have. I feel like you cleaned up for her. I feel like that's the type of guy that you are. Chris, this is a weight that's going to be on you for the rest of your life until we resolve it tonight. Unless we can talk about this more tonight, we're going to follow you forever. I promise you, when you start talking to us, you will feel better. Chris, we're giving you a lifeline right now. You need to take it. You need to reach out and take it. This is a very critical moment in the interrogation, guys. Chris, you took them out of the house with their blankets and their animals. And that's because you cared. That's what a caring dad does. And you either cleaned up after Shanann or you made the mistake. And, you know. So you can see here they're utilizing two di- different types of you know techniques here. Alternative question, the ego up technique. Uh, they're going to throw in a dossier technique here very soon where, hey, we already got information on this, etc. So let's see how they employ this. I want to believe that maybe Shanann did it and you felt compelled to 
fix this so Shenan doesn't look bad. That's what I that's what I want to believe. But I don't know, you're not telling me that, so it makes me think the worst. Like did you I did not do all three of them? Like not do anything. Not what did she need to do? Tell us, Chris. Chicks are crazy. Can I talk to my dad or something? Absolutely. Do you want to bring him in here? No, uh, I just can't talk to my dad. Like, he flew across the country. He crashed him. How about this? If we brought your dad in here, would you please tell him what happened? You need to realize that your dad is not going to stop loving you no matter what you tell him. You are. Mm, very interesting technique that they're utilizing, man. Using the heartstrings from family. Yeah. Child. And he will not stop watching. Never. Never. And this is not the last chapter in anyone's story at all. Okay. Hey, Chris, we're going to let you have uh, however much time you need, okay? Sure. Can you leave us in there? Uh, yeah. Yes. Sure. Tell us how long you need, or? And this uh, polygraph failed it. I would there because there's too much emotions. It's anything else you want to tell me what's what's going on? Or what I have to drink or anything about when we had that conversation that morning, it's you know, it was emotional and it was total about separation and everything like that. Mm -hmm. Oh boy, here we go. All right, guys, I need y'all before we continue this on, because we're about to get into some interesting stuff here. We're at 2,259, y'all. Okay, we're almost at a uh, 2,500, almost. Need y'all to like the video. Gets us 2,000 likes. Again, I hate doing this, but you guys never like liking the videos, man. Stop being ninja watchers. Take the mask off your face. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Comment below for the algo. I hate that I have to do this, man. But y'all don't like the goddamn video. Like the video. All right? It helps with the algorithm. Uh, and then also, I'll hit these chats real fast. Because this is a very important part here that we're about to see. Uh, Twisted Talks with Noah goes, I know it's super old and there isn't footage of the guy, but H.H. H. Holmes was the first serial killer in America. Has some wild stories. Consider him, please. I have him down. You have him on the I list? Have, yeah. Right. Shout out to Angie. Myron, have you heard of the baseline killer from Arizona? I have not. Uh, yeah, it's a real killer. That's also highly requested, by the way. Okay. Just like the video on my TV, iPad, laptop, and phone. City boys, we have. Shout out to you, my friend. That's what you gotta do. Down the Monko. Log in from other accounts, guys, and just like the video. Get us up to 2K and we'll be good. Uh, Detective of Notre Dame, probably homie hopped that whole apartment. <laughs> okay, that was from Fresh's dog. Uh, Jerome, if I was a politician, I would allow professional fighters three minutes with criminals like this, put it on pay-per-view, and tax it. Everyone wins. That's actually a very good idea. Uh, <laughs> can you do the Murder, Inc. Fed case? They ended up beating them. Yes, they did. Uh, I, I know it was a uh, money laundering case with Irv Gotti and Ken, the Supreme team. I'll probably have to do both of those together uh, with the Supreme team. But uh, yeah, good, good. Uh, uh, Angie, can you write that one down? Murder, Inc.? That was yeah. a rap, hip-hop group, or, uh, music label down here. Um, but yeah, guys, again... Like the video, let's get back into this. Yeah, as y'all know, the father's in the interrogation room now and they're talking. I don't want to protect her. I don't know what else to say. She heard him. Yeah. And uh, what now? Oh, whoa! <laughs> Bomba. <laughs> Ah, so he puts the wife to blame. Boom, book out. Separation and everything about. I don't know, like, what else to say, but I 
Então, nós vamos aqui. God Almighty. Cece is one of the children's. Yes, Celeste. Stop the cap! Listen, God Almighty. So at this point, the police have a confession that he at least killed the mother, okay? At this point. But he's trying to claim it was in retaliation for her killing the children because he wanted to break up with her, okay? Which, quite frankly, is, uh, you know, for, it doesn't make sense. But the, the detectives now, they're, remember, guys, the detectives are watching this interview live as it's going on. So now they're going to re-strategize, and they're, they got one foot in the door now at this point. I think at this point, the grandfather know, or the father knows his son is going to prison Where for the rest of his life. Yeah. He knows it's a wrap. You know, just, it's over. Yay! See, now you want to get a lawyer. Too late! There you go. Boom. Yeah, man. <laughs> Boom. Less than 10 seconds after the mention. Yeah, she's happy. Why are you reassuring With that hunchback him? because they got, they're halfway through now. She, at least he got her, they got him to admit to killing the wife, which, you know, murder one at least, right? At least one murder, excuse me of the word lawyer. The detectives re-enter the room and immediately reinforce Chris with non-verbal empathic communication. They immediately- Because they don't want him to lawyer up at this point. Immediately divert Chris's attention from the well-informed advice of his father to their own appreciative reception of his contemporary admittance. Can you help us not this with you, okay? Guys, stop with the jokes, please. <laughs> <laughs> they keep joking about your dad. She Although not the full avowal they are pursuing, Chris has still confessed partly to the crimes, and they now have one foot in the door. He is no longer free to leave. The interrogation now returns to a non-suggestive process, where the detectives will collect further information, where they will not contaminate with excessive or direct input. Mm -hmm. They're at the first location I went to that day. I know. I didn't know what. And remember, guys, he's an oil field worker. You do. Like, none of, this, none of this made sense. Why would she hear my fucking girls? I'm sorry. I know. I know you are. I know you came in today to do the right thing. Where'd you from? It's a mountain. In the truck. Did Shannon fight back at all? You did that? The 
rage that I had after seeing him that night. All right. This is very common with criminals where they'll justify their crime with something that, you know, brought about some crazy passion, which in this case, he's alleging that the wife choked the kids out. He came up, saw they were blue and couldn't control himself. I know. I didn't know what else to do. I was so scared. I know. It's like my wife just did this. That just did that. What do I do? Right. You're in a tough spot. I think, what can you do, right? Your body just kind of takes the burden. What's going to happen? We're going to help them get out of there. Chris, I know they're gone, but they're still your babies. And you're still their dad. <laughs> so the detectives are playing along here so that they can find the bodies. Okay, because at this point, they, they know that he knows where the bodies are. Whether he says that he... You know, the wife killed the kids or he did. That's irrelevant because they'll be able to figure that out with the forensics. So now they, their goal, they'll play along with his stupid story just so that they can find the bodies and prove that he's the actual killer. Because trust me, they don't believe that, you know, the wife did it. <laughs> more L acting, by the way. Can you want someone else to find that out there? You don't, I promise you. Translation, they're going to get the forensic squad ready, the crime scene investigators, they're going to get a bunch of people um, <clears throat> prepared so that they can go out and find the bodies and, um, ex uh, you know, exhume them. <laughs> So the dad actually believes him, guys. The father actually believes his nonsensical story. But remember, the dad wasn't present throughout this whole thing. He just flew in, so he doesn't really know all the facts. No, no, not tonight. Where we need to get up with the rocks on this one, man. Hello, what oh, this guy? Um, Just a man and the girls. Yeah. The last person in. Okay. And where are the girls at? Mm -hmm. So, how did you do this out? I'm assuming that's under dirt. How did you take that? So, it sounds like, I mean, it feels like to me, now we know pretty well how to go get them. Is there anything else we need to know? So they're playing along with his story. Why? Because they want to get a solid groundwork, right? Locking him into a story, even though it doesn't make sense, because they know when they find the bodies, it's going to show otherwise. Get her off his life. Do you think um, about calling an ambulance? Come. I see you there blue and limp. Mm -hmm. I've never seen something like that in my life. I mean, she just like lay over, like. Nothing was she wasn't moving at all. No gas, no breath. Oh. She was totally just 
After the baseline information of Chris's version of events is gathered, he is now locked into an alibi and timeline of affairs that forensics will subsequently examine and dissect in Bam. Gotcha, bitch! ways so they can use it against him. The tone of the interrogation then reverts back from information gathering to a confrontational nature. So Chris, you've been doing the show for a long time. I know. I, uh, I know a lot of about psychology and as far as like what people are thinking. Most parents will never even want to fathom that their kid or their kid is dead. Even if their kid's stiff, blue in bed, I mean stiff like been dead all night, they still call an ambulance to see if someone can revive their child. And they, when the ambulance get the, gets there and they're like, gosh, their kid's been dead all night. Like, there's nothing we can do. And the parents are like, what are you, why are you not doing something? What are you talking about? So that's what I'm, that's what we're used to. So I just, that's why I want you to explain to me, like, what was going on in your head and. But where you left off, or what she, was, what she did. It just took over. I just, I would hate for Shanann to get a bad rap. She didn't have anything to do with it. You know, it's not fair. It's not fair. There is no technical term for this approach, yet it's a clear attempt by the detective to interconnect to the suspect's sense of morality, which is always under the assumption that they have any. Like enough bad stuff has happened, but like we need to stop the bad stuff from happening. So you're good with the public knowing that Shanann killed her daughter? I did not hurt these girls. Are you okay with the public knowing that Shanann? Yeah, it's good. I did not hurt these girls. Again, referring to the kids as these girls, these kids. Very strange behavior. Are you sure she didn't catch you? Oh no, my God, no. Don't get mad. But what it looks like is that you found a new life. And the only way to get that new life was to get rid of the old life. Oh, oh boy. Gotcha, bitch. Yeah, you wanted to smash, keep smashing that girl without any problems, man. You wanted a new life. And I think that you killed these girls before their mom came home and then killed her now. And that's what we're... They said Chris pleaded guilty to these exact charges two months later. We're kind of left. That's what we have to believe because it just doesn't make sense. I mean, to her point, if I walked in and my kid was decapitated, I'd call an ambulance, mm -hmm. right? So Knowing there's no hope. It just, it just doesn't make sense. It just doesn't add up. So... Either Three Diglets asks a fantastic question. Why couldn't he just smash both? Yeah, you're right. Down the Marco, Come on, Marco, man. Should have just kept cheating. He would have been fine. Had his kids still, had his wife, had the side piece. But this guy had to be a simp and go all the way and hit him with the fatality for some girl that don't even like him. Now he's in jail with some other guy. Get over here. And that's an L. You stupid. Holy. This monster, you yeah. know, I just want this young, hot girlfriend, so I'm going to kill everyone and hope it works out or something. So I think we're very, very close to the truth, but not by their guesses. So if you're not that monster, I'm not a monster. So what's going to happen when their cause of death comes back to you? Or the girl's not going to. Okay. You sure? I'm 100% positive it's not going to come back to me. And what happens when a coroner looks and says it sees your fingerprints on her neck? Not gonna be my fingerprints. Okay. What's it gonna be? It's gonna be Shanann. Why take their bodies out of the house and bury them? I was scared. I didn't know what else to do. Okay. Nothing 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 was gonna I I didn't know what to do. Yeah. So I honestly didn't know what to do. Scared of what? Scared of what everything was going to look like. There was, my two babies were gone, mm -hmm. and I, I just did that to my wife. And I was the only one left in the house. What do you expect is going to happen? Yeah. Yo, the RP really does save lives, guys. If this dude was aware, he could have made that chick his side chick, had his wife, you know, or just been honest. Yo, I want to have other chicks. You know, he's not, he's not a bad-looking guy. Pause. You guys are going to see here that a bunch of chicks were actually simping on him when he went to prison. I'll talk about that here in a little bit. But That's uh, a phenomenon. Yeah, what was that you said? It is a phenomenon. Yeah, they, yeah, for girls, serial killers. Girls love weirdos like this. But um, yeah, dude, like he could have easily like done this, 
and had two girls and been able to like make it happen. But since he was a simp and he didn't understand female nature, he thought, oh, I just got to get rid of my wife so that I can be with this other girl. No, you could have had them both, you dummy. It's fucking idiot. Stupid. Hey, well, it is what it is, man. He really thought women deserve more. So that's why he ended up doing this dumb stuff. It did look bad, right? It looked, I mean, this was a nightmare. Yeah. Okay. Yo, what the fuck, bro? Colin Coran goes, dude is going to die with a 3.0 kill per death ratio. <laughs> what the fuck? What? It's a video game term. <laughs> Yo, what the fuck, bro? <laughs> Yo, what the fuck? <laughs> my already saying yo what the fuck man I'm fucking dead bro <laughs> yo my man been playing too much Call of Duty bro what the fuck man <laughs> yo y'all got no chill in this chat man y'all got no chill I'll never forget uh, I was doing the Jeffrey Dahmer ca- case and you know how he makes the people watch The Exorcist with him? What? He like Jeffrey Dahmer before he kills his victims, he makes them watch the ne- the the um the Exorcist. Yeah, 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 yeah. Someone in the chat put, "Yo, he he's uh, he brought the dude over for Netflix and kill." And I was <laughs> like, "What the fuck?" Yeah. <laughs> That's a good joke. Yo, man, this chat is on something else, man. Yo, like the video. We got. Two two thousand two hundred forty six of y'all watching right now, man. Best shot ever. Like the video. Let's hit two thousand. Let's hit two point two k likes, man. Yesterday when you were talking, um, and again this is before we kind of got to this um, moment today. You mentioned that um, we were talking. You said, "I don't know where they are. I don't know where they are." And then you said something along the lines of. Whatever happened to him is act of pure evil. What does that mean? Is this the evil that I saw when I walked behind him and she was on top of his And then I felt evil spread in the man. After we after we look at their bodies, we're gonna have a lot more questions. Um, things are gonna be different then, but if you're willing, we'd love to talk to you then too. Now that we know what we know, um, we're going to. Um, I need to check that you don't have any weapons on you or anything like that. Do you have any weapons on you? Okay. Um, They're about to arrest them. Cause remember, he came in voluntarily, guys. We'll Which is also very stupid. Never talk to the police voluntarily, guys, without a lawyer present, ever. Okay? You don't say nothing to the police. Yeah, go to the bathroom. I'm not going to go in the stall with you, but I'm going to go with you. Um, and then we'll come right back here and we'll make a decision about how the rest of the night goes. Oh, no. They already know that he's going to get arrested. That's why they're not letting him go to the bathroom by himself or anything like that. He's At this point, he's under arrest. They just don't want to say it. All right. So, you might stand it up so I can check it. This interrogation was a true testimony of how mental fatigue can restructure an individual's cognitive rationale. Chris maintained his innocence even after the failed polygraph, and if he had kept that stance, he would have walked out of that police department as a free man for at least another night. Yet, after a prolonged state of isolation, anxiety, and fear, coupled with the cerebral influencing tactics of the interrogators, the alleviation of getting out of that situation was in that moment perceived as enough of a luxury to exchange his freedom for. Chris, come stand up for me. I'm going to have you face that wall. Lift up your hands. So they're having the deputy make the arrest. Why are they doing that? So that they can get it on camera footage. Have him come in and, and make it, right? So in case he makes any other incriminating statements so that they can record it. Bam. Uh, and real quick, uh, here's the arrest guys, the warrantless arrest affidavit, um, for it. Uh, James Matthew right here being duly sworn uh, upon oath. Let me go ahead and enlarge this for y'all real quick. And can you pull up some of the groupie stuff, by the way, um, Angie, that the girls were going crazy for this guy. Um, 
Yeah, Sworn gonna... oath says that there is probable cause for the warrantless arrest of the above named defendant for the charges stated above, and that the following facts are true and correct to the best of his or her knowledge, information, and belief supports the arrest of this defendant. Um, and you guys can see here tampering with deceased body, three counts, and then murder in the first degree, three counts. Um, and then August 13, 2018, approximately, uh, and then it just goes into the, all the facts, right? Um, and this warrantless arrest affidavit, what they probably did, guys, was after the confession. Let me see here. We'll go to the bottom here. On A14, approximately 7, Detective Baumhofer learned, Bonhover learned that Shannon nor the girls had returned to the residence. This uh, Baumhofer requested an immediate press release to be issued and uh, initiated assistance from the CBI and ultimately the FBI. Two-day investigation revealed Chris was actively involved in an affair with a co-worker, which he denied previous yes. interviews. They interviewed her. They did too. She she called the police. She said that she wanted to talk to the police, and they interviewed her. She said a bunch of things. She knew about the family. She knew about the wife. She knew about the kids. She knew about everything. Uh -huh. Um, um. I wanted to say this though. Yeah. Um, so this is from the interview. You guys can see it right here. Um. Uh, yeah, I have a whole document. Uh, um. Yeah, like a web website that has like all the documents of the case is two thousand pages of oh, holy documents on the case so, so this is his excuse that we got for an interview chris said they went into a rage and ultimately strangled the, uh shannon uh to death chris said he loaded all three bodies onto the back of the uh his work truck and took them to an oil site identified a survey 319 with gps coordinates mm -hmm. etc chris said he buried shannon near the two oil tanks and dumped the girls inside the oil tanks chris presented an aerial photograph of the tank battery area and identified three separate locations in which he placed the bodies which we showed you guys earlier um, prior to Chris's confession, investigators arrived at Survey 319 with consent to initiate a drone search of the area at approximately 4.15 p.m. Investigators spotted a bed sheet in the field near the tank battery. The sheet matched the pattern of the several pillow cases in a top sheet cut, recovered from a kitchen trash can from Watts residence early that day. That search, uh, that search was conducted with prior consent provided by Chris. The drone search also revealed fresh movement of dirt consistent with the clandestine grave near the oil tanks. And then bam. He went ahead and got this signed on uh, on the 16th of August. So a couple of days later, they went ahead and got this arrest. So they arrested him, and then they went and got, uh, filed this affidavit. Okay. So uh, there it is. Um, did you have uh, anything you want to share real quick? Uh, oh, and then here's the house real quick while Angie pulls up his groupies. Um, this is the house where the murder actually occurred, guys. Uh, house of Horror for sale. Uh, Colorado home where Chris Watts murdered his wife and kids is secretly listed for $660,000. But buyers must prove they have the funds before uh, touring to avoid it turning into a true crime fan destination. Because <laughs> you guys know, right, that a lot of this happens a lot of times in real estate where people just want to go ahead and just get a tour and take pictures and stuff. Yeah. So they actually they bought the house serious. for three three hundred thousand dollars. Oh, it got sold for only three hundred k. No, 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 no. They bought it. Like oh, they the bought family, it for three hundred. They bought it. Yeah. Okay. Um, it was listed for six hundred and sixty thousand dollars, and now it's valued for eight hundred thousand. Well, so it goes here. The Frederick, Colorado home where Chris Watts strangled his wife, pregnant Shannon, to death is now for sale. The five-bed, four-bath property was secretly listed last week for $660,000 under a fictitious address. Watts and Shannon purchased the home for in 2013 for $400,000 and now it's valued to be eight hundred. dollars Yeah, so it got okay. sold last year. The agent for offering 600. limited showings of the home to buyers with funding commitment letters for six sixty. dollars Interested parties are required to submit their offers and bank commitment letters by May 24th. The home was listed for auction in 2019 after Watts defaulted on the mortgage and the bank foreclosed on it. Uh, no one bid on the property, and it has remained vacant since the Watts family lived there. Watts is serving multiple life sentences for killing Shannon and their daughters, Bella 4 and Celeste 3. And this is back to the, the murders here. Here's a picture of him with his family. Look at this, man. Look at that. That was a beautiful family, man. He ruined it to be mm -hmm. an idiot. Like, come on, man. You stupid. What, to have some side piece? <laughs> Foolish. Um, so he ended up pleading guilty uh, on November 6th. Uh, the death penalty was not put forward by a district attorney on the request of Shannon's family, who do not wish any further deaths. They were supportive of his decision to accept a plea deal. On November 19th, he was sentenced to two life sentences. Uh, excuse me. Five he was sentenced sentences. to five life sentences, three consecutive and two concurrent. Without the possibility of parole, he received an additional 48 years for the unlawful termination of Shannon's pregnancy and 36 years for three charges of tampering with a deceased body. His sentence began immediately on December 3rd, 2018. Watts was moved to an out-of-state location due to security concerns. On December 5th, he arrived at Dodge Correctional Institution, Maximum Security Pri uh, Prison in uh, Wapun, Wisconsin, to continue serving his life sentence. Uh, so, yeah. 
And then here on November 30, 2020, Netflix released American Murder, The Family Next Door, mm -hmm. a documentary about the murders. The documentary features archival footage, including home videos, social media posts, text messages, and law enforcement recordings. 2022, The True Crime and SKYND published a single called Chris Watts based on the Watts case. That's a cool band. So they make like songs about serial killers. Oh, funny. do they? Yeah. Weirdos. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's that. That is the Chris Watts case, guys. Um, summary. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. Did you find his groupie girls? Yeah, I mean. You want to share it on screen? Yeah. Okay. Here it is. It's very cute. Uh, go ahead. And so Chris Watts may be serving three life hit, sentences. Hit Control Plus more. a few times. Where? Hit Control Plus so they can be uh, enlarged so the people can. Plus. Uh, yeah. So it'll make it bigger. There okay. you go. More? Okay. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so Chris Ross may be serving three life sentences for the murders of his pregnant wife and two daughters. Um, but this has stopped some fans from sending him love letters in jail. So according to ABC7, prosecutors have released dozens of letters that have been sent to Watts with one woman in writing, in my heart, I know you are a great guy. What the hell, bro? If you do write me back, I'll be the happiest girl alive. That's for sure. Denied. Team Chris. Team Chris. Chris is innocent. Love him. So cute. How's he innocent when you admit, bro? These girls, bro. Holy. Another, another sent her note saying, I have found myself thinking a lot about you. <laughs> what what do I tell y'all, bro? Yo, girls, <laughs> yo, anything for clout, man. I'm telling you, man. Because he has social status. Unfortunately, even though he did a reprehensible thing, he became famous because of this case. Yeah. Well, Nationwide. Just like Ted Bundy. Ted Bundy. Exactly. Yeah, Ted Bundy, the Night Stalker, uh, Jeffrey Dahmer. They all had a bunch of girls showing up at their uh, trials. Yeah, I don't know. I don't so, know how they see these guys, but yeah. Anything else here besides his groupies? Or um, it? yeah, the house got sold last year. That's what I was saying. Um, yep. for this family right here, mm -hmm. family of five. Um, and I was saying I found the documents on the case. You find you guys can find the the whole autopsies for the three victims there. Okay, hit Control uh, Plus real quick so the people can see it. Yeah. This is the, you can find the text more, with the wife. More, you, can, do it more. you can find the nudes. Because uh, they it, will send the nudes? Yeah, oh, they will send God. the nudes, man. That's all there? Oh, and the yes. nudes, wait, nudes as in naked or news? N nudes as in naked. Oh, wow, okay. They'll be sharing nudes and stuff. Okay. They actually, they, I highlighted this because after uh, the murders, they talk on the phone for like a, a phone call. Oh, him and Sancha? They and, talked on the phone after Nicole, the murders? Nicole the, was the mistress. Yeah, oh, after the wow. murders. When, you know when he got the interview that he was snickering? Yeah. Yeah. So that night, uh, they called. He called Nicole, the, the mistress, and he told her what was going on and blah, blah. Oh, wow. And she started like, looking up. She started delaying all text. Like, this has all text between them. Between him and the girl. So what I'll do is I'll put this for y'all down below if you guys want to see him texting his girl. Uh... <laughs> You know, after you can the find murder. all the texts here. They she be having like sketchy texts, like I don't know, like can cops trace text messages. Ah, he was asking her all these questions. Yeah. And she be asking about Scott Peterson's do you know Scott Peterson's? That that's a serial killer too. Very mm. famous. He killed okay. his wife too. And she was looking up like what happened to Scott Peterson's wife. Uh, mistress because he also had a mistress wow holy all right well uh <laughs> that's an l from him <laughs> but other than that guys um hope you guys enjoyed that uh pod uh go ahead and like the video i think we just hit 2000 uh guys if we get to 2100 i'd really love it um we got 2177 watching right now but i'm gonna put timestamps below i'll put the link below as well with all the um all the text messages and uh and you got anything for the people no, I just wanted to say that this is the exact example for family annihilators. What's the word? Annihilators. An annihilators. Annihilators. Oh, matter of fact, you know, let's take a poll with the people. Since we're, you guys stood this long, so you guys go ahead and get the ability to uh, choose this. Yo! Listen to this, so, Listen to this. So according to a FBA agent, former FBA agent, people responsible. You mean FBI? FBI, sorry. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. People responsible for killing their families are always white males in their theories. You know what? Everybody I think about it is... I mean, Murdoch was older, but definitely a white male. Yes, and, and most of these, of these killings, like uh, family killings, mm -hmm. happen before August, before school starts. Ah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, so, guys, you guys want us to cover Murdoch? 
or BMF. All right? One in the chat if you guys want us to cover Murdaugh. Two in the chat if you guys want us to cover BMF. <laughs> okay? One for Murdaugh. Two for Black Mafia Family. FBI. <laughs> one for Murdaugh. Two for Black Mafia Family. A.K.A. Big Meech. Man. Right. Let's see here. Murdaugh or Big Meech? I'm seeing a lot of twos. I'm seeing a lot of ones. You know what? I'll do a poll. It might be easier if I do a poll. Yeah, this is... Because it's hard to... This is tight. All right, I'm going to start a poll right now. Okay. Next. Two, 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 two. BMF <laughs> or Murdaw? Okay. I'm going to put this poll up right now for y'all in the chat. might spell murder all wrong but you guys get the point <laughs> all right i'm gonna let it rip right now ask the community let's see what y'all say it is up guys go ahead and also while we do this like the video guys please let's get this thing up to almost 100 percent engagement there's 2,000 plus you guys in here if you guys can uh because some of y'all haven't hit the like thing if we can hit 2100 that'd be fantastic Let's see here what, what everybody's saying. Let's see, let's see, let's see what the audience is saying. Oh, it's close. 56% for BMF. 45%. Oh, now it's 55-45. Let's see what they say. Guys, get engaged. Go ahead. Vote on this thing. I want to see what y'all want. Ooh, BMF. It looks like BMF is winning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know that Stars documentary. Everyone is going crazy for it. Uh... Let's see. Let's see here. All right. Looks like BMF is going. I'll give it another. Um, I'll give it another one or two minutes. Because I do want to see what y'all actually want. Have the people decide. Let's see here. I will do both. Don't worry, guys. I just want to see what I what I need to do first. Okay, it looks like BMF is winning. It's going to be probably end up being 60-40. Uh, 60-40 is what it's looking like. Mm -hmm. Right? All right, I'll read the chats real quick while we wait for that to finish. All right, we got uh, Sephiroth goes, did Chosin get booted from the boys club? Uh, nah, man. I just don't know where he's at. He should have called Lester, the 240 lifestyle. Cool. Black Moses, could y'all check out the Monster Florence case from Italy? Has that one ever come, come across your side? No. Um, I, wanted to Florence ask you Italy? Though, I wanted to ask you, though, like, if we do cases from outside America? Yeah, we can if it's, if it's good enough. Right. Um, dude went from working the oil field to Tyrone getting the petroleum jelly. <laughs> you guys are hilarious. Uh, Sephiroth, he's probably in, uh, to be honest, guys, he's probably in isolation. Uh, since this His, is such a high profile case. He was on case. their watch. Yeah. Go. Yeah, he's probably by himself. When you when you get it like a high profile case like that, the defendant almost never gets a roommate. Uh, Family of Five bought the house in November 2022. Mm -hmm. Okay, dude did the Tory story. I don't want to play with you anymore to his wife and kids. Oh God, Traveler Sensei, U.S. case isn't a crime of passion a thing. For example, uh, when a father choked his friend to death when he caught the man graping his seven year old daughter. Yeah, that could be a possibility, but we know that he killed his his uh, children. It wasn't her. Uh, Adam Russell, 39, super sticker. Appreciate that. Ten bucks. Inst uh, instinctual messages goes Pross on a show, Myron, by chance. Have you done an MLK or JFK assassination breakdown? No, but I will be covering it. God damn. Uh, bug got in here. Uh, I will be covering it with uh, the JFK situation with Ryan Dawson. All right. You guys might catch me in Japan. Who knows? Have you seen the Showtime TV series Dexter? This case reminds me of that show. Chris would definitely be on Dexter list. Has there been any killers in history that have been the, that vigilante type? Uh, not that I could think of off the top of my head. David Cador, Fire Show Myron, and Angela, please cover Israel K's. Dude was a different type of serial killer. Didn't fit the standard psych profile at all. Never heard of him. Sweater looks like white and black pinstripe candies. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Jay goes for the back. <laughs> Good eats. Can you do the murder ink fed case? Okay, we got that one. And then let me make sure I didn't miss anyone else's chat. Uh, okay, it looks like Feta and BMF are still fighting here. Um, it looks like BMF is the winner, man, is what it looks like to me. Uh, give it another few seconds here, unless, you know... Uh, 
Murdoch can get pull off a big one, but it looks like it's going to be BMF is going to be the next case that we cover for you guys. I'll probably drop that on Thursday for y'all. Um, um, you guys, you some of you were asking if 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 it was possible that the wife who killed the kids, it was not because she actually fought for her life. It was found in the autopsy, so you can guys check it out in the documents. Okay. I might drop you that link though, so they can check the documents. Yeah, you can, you can see everything there if you want to see like the pictures. Who everything, died first? What was the order of death? The the the, the mom probably died first. Yes, right? of course, Shannon, and then she killed. Um, I think it was the older child. Okay. And then she killed the little one who actually asked, like, what was she do? What was daddy doing with? She asked, like, what are you doing, daddy? Like, what are you doing to my sister? Ah, okay. So she caught him getting the the second one. She saw one. everything. She saw the murder of her of his of her sister. Okay. Wow. Which okay. Is horrible. Okay, and that probably horrible. made him say even more so that he's got to get rid of all all witnesses. So, um, but it was the mom that he, he got first. Yes. Okay. That makes yes. sense. All right. Uh, guys, it looks like we're going to be covering BMF next then, okay? <laughs> I think a big Meech, Larry Hoover, all right? Um, okay, cool. Other than that, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed that broadcast, man. Um, we've been going now for two and two two hours and 40 minutes. Guys, like the video. <laughs> Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Share this video with a friend. Time are going to be in very soon. Yeah. Love y'all. Free Andrew Tate, free Tristan. We know that they're innocent. I'll catch you guys tomorrow for Money Monday um, with the squad. And after hours, and then we're going to have another show for you guys on Tuesday, as well as an after hours as well. Then I'm going to go to Dubai on Wednesday. So, um, Angie, what's your, I'll give you the last word. Go ahead. Uh, right. Yeah, you can check me out on Instagram. It's at so Angelica with two A's at the end. But please don't send dick pics. Don't, send, don't ask me for fit pics or don't ask me for OnlyFans. Like, I don't have any of that. I won't send dick pics. So, yeah, you guys are the best. Thank you for your support. Subscribe and like. There you go. And uh, guys, send them dick pics. No. <laughs> I was a special agent with Homeland Security Investigations, okay, guys? HSI. The cases that I did mostly were human smuggling and drug trafficking. No one else has these documents, by the way. Here's what FedEx covers. Dr. Lafredo confirmed lacerations due to stepping on glass. Murder investigation. You see him reaching in his jacket. You don't know. And he's positioning. Been on February 13, 2019. You're facing two counts of two meditated murder. Racketeering and Rico conspiracy. Young, young slime life here and after referred to as YSL. The defendant's uh, 6 9 And then this is Billy Seiko right here. Now, when they first started, guys, 6 9 ran with. I'm a fed. I'm watching this music video. You know, I'm bobbing my head like, hey, this shit lit. But at the same time, I'm pausing. Oh, wait, who this? Right? Oh, who's that in the back?